I think we're we're doing good. There's currently a very very windy storm outside my window, so that that is kind of terrifying me a little bit. Not gonna lie. All right, back with more Phoenix Wright, where we last left off. Um, we're in case four. Farewell, my turnabout. And we, we which one was I? Which save file was it? It was, uh... It's the second one, right? Am I crazy? I think... I'm pretty sure it's the second one. Yeah, it's the second one. There we go. Um... No, it wasn't the second one. What the hell am I doing? It's the third one. Where the fuck? Part 3, Investigation 1. Part 2, Investigation... Yeah. Is this it? Let me see. There, there, pearls. I can't take it. All right. No, no, no. I feel like this isn't part three, one investigation, part two, two try. What the hell? Was this where I left off at? Honestly, I can't remember. It's been a couple of days. But, um, where we last left off, um, we couldn't get, we couldn't get our not guilty verdict that we wanted, the full acquittal, but we did stumble upon some things that are, um, this is, no, this is, no way, this can't be the fucking, this can't be where I left off at, there's no way. No way this is where I left off at. I'm calling bullshit on this. Which one did I leave off at? Oh my god. It was, uh... We finished the trial and then Matt was there. <laughs> oh shit. Which, which save file was it? I know this one says part 3, 1 investigation. This one says part two, but I don't remember. I don't remember like stopping in front of Pearl. I remember stopping in front of Matt. Did I? Did I? Did I fuck up my saves? I might have fucked up my saves. There's no way. Hold on. Let me just skip this. Well, let's see the court record first. Lotus photo. I'm just skipping ahead because honestly, I don't. The future Edgeworth. How did I? How the fuck did I get here? I, I'm confused because we left. I'm pretty sure we left off right in front of Matt. I'm pretty sure we didn't. <laughs> Why? Let me see. See, when I saw him, I thought I fainted. Honest. When I realized he was dead, that was okay. Hold up. That's right in that room. Then I stabbed Juan with the knife. Had a bit of an inconvenience. What the hell? I'll be honest, I don't know where the fuck I am. <laughs> I could have sworn I ended off with the uh, with Matt in front of us. Let me see. When I first saw him, I really thought he fainted. Well, let's just you know what? Let's just finish this because I remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> Even I can't remember what the hell's going on here. My mind is mushed. My mind is mushed up. All right, I says you think this carefully. Where the fuck? Part two, part three. 
I'm really... When I realized he was dead, it's when I formulated my plan. Once I'm sure he was no one in the hall, so I made a mad dash to Matt's room. And then I st stabbed Juan's body. Fucking... <laughs> I'm really... I'm really pissed off that I don't... I, I forgot where my goddamn save file was. And I, I guess I just ended up saving it in the wrong spot or something. Let me see. I think I just have to press all her statements. Because I honestly do not... Do not remember... <laughs> Let me see. This is what happens. This is what happens when you don't... When you don't have, like, a good labeling system for your save files. And that's why I end up using a Nickel Samurai costume. Let me see. Okay, there we go. Then there's all this. And then we can't get the, uh... We can't get the full acquittal. So this is where we left off at. Yeah, this is definitely where we left off at. All right. <laughs> now that we're now that we're back to where we actually left off at. God damn it. How did I fuck up my save? And then they start talking about the card she's carrying because it's important for some goddamn reason. She found the cardi of uh, the cardi. She found the cardi when she found the body. <laughs> She found the card when she found the body. That's what I meant to say. The card has something to do with something. Alright. <laughs> You're finishing watching Die Hard? That's a Christmas movie. I believe it. There we go. This is where we left off at. I don't know why I why I'm in front of the goddamn um whatchamacallit. Oh. Huh. I could have swore we left off in front of Matt. Never mind. Shit, I guess this was where I left off at. I don't remember it being in the office. Huh. Well that's interesting. Well I had the right save. <laughs> Hello and a Merry Christmas. Yes, a Merry Christmas to one and all, and a Happy Holidays. Hmm, indubitably. Alright, now that I'm at where we left off, even though I had the save file, apparently. I just didn't remember it was this. It's only been two days, how did I forget? <laughs> Alright. So, where we last left off, we couldn't get the full acquittal. Maya's still missing. Well, not missing, she's still kidnapped. Or maybe she escaped, we, we're not sure. Um, we all know that Matt did not, Matt, that's his name, right? Matt did not do the murder. Neither did his assistant, Adrian. She did not do the murder. And somehow this card that she's been holding the whole time has something to do with something and Edgeworth knows some shit. And I guess Mia went back to the afterlife. Because as a ghost, you can just do whatever the hell you want, I guess. I don't know. There's no spiritual rules or anything. Become three times as strong in death. Alright. Mystic Maya. There, there, Pearls. It's alright. I can't take it. I bet you can't. Look, it'll be alright. Everything will still work out. Hmm? The condition was that we had to get a not guilty verdict. And so far, the kidnapper has kept his word and hasn't hurt Maya. And he won't because Mr. En Mr. Engard hasn't been given a guilty sentence yet. Come on, Pearl, cheer up. We don't have time to stand around and cry. We have to get going. 
You're right. Of course I'm right. I'm Mr. Right. I am Phoenix Right. Mystic Maya is in so much more pain than I am. Yes, that's right. So, quit your bitching. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys! Glad I can caught. Uh, glad I caught you, pal. Mister Scruffy Detective. Oh, looks like the detective comes you. Has been dubbed Mister Scruffy Detective in Pearl's book now. Damn it, Von Karma! You sullied her innocence. This is a plain old Mister Dick Gumshoe now. And I came. And I came, is his first name Dick? Isn't his first name Dick? I'm pretty sure. And now I came to talk to you, pal. But we're kind of busy right now. What do you want? So, what are you gonna do from now on? Since you're fired. Man, that sucks. She fired his ass. What do you mean, pal? Well, you've been fired, right? So, do you have a new job lined up yet? You're not working for me, Gumshoe. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm too broke. Oh, that? Uh, what am I supposed to do now, pal? I don't have any- I don't have anything coming at me. Well, I completely flubbed that. I don't have anything coming in- in, uh, in at all until my next payday. What are you talking about? You don't have another payday. I guess that means I'm just gonna have to work here at your place. What the fuck do you mean? I got no money! I don't even pay Maya and she's technically my assistant. You'll be searching for things that will prove Mr. Ungarden innocent all day, right? Well, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna help you, pal. I got lots of experience in investigating and watching over people's places. And I'm great at making really simple meals, pal. I'll take care of it all. Oh, come on, Mr. Nick. Let Mr. Scruffy Detective take care of things. I can't pay him, I'm broke! Uh, okay. By the way, what's your best dish? Instant noodles, pal. I mean, you can't go wrong with that, unless somehow you're an idiot who just burns it because you don't put water in it. I joke about that, but I know I know someone who actually burned instant noodles because they didn't think you had to put water in it. They just put the noodles inside a bowl inside a microwave, and I said, what the hell is this? And then they were like, they were like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, you got to put water in it. And no, it wasn't a child. <laughs> it was someone who was above the age of 14. Why am I, uh, why am I surrounded by people who, who only eat cheap, unhealthy foods? What do you mean? Pearl eats healthy? She's like a vegetarian or whatever the fuck. That was the first time I've seen, I've ever seen Mr. Edgeworth act like that. Never thought he'd say something like, like that. He didn't care if Miss Andrews killed herself. He said that? That's horrible. He did say that. But because of him doing that, we got the truth finally. The truth. Miss Andrews' last testimony. I wonder if there was I wonder what was eh. I wonder if that was the truth. I just woke up. <laughs> I literally just woke up. That's why the that's why we started late tonight with the stream. God. My sleep schedule is fucked. I'll give you there uh I could eh. Uh, 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 I'll give you that there was nothing strange in her testimony itself. But I still think there's something fundamentally wrong with the whole thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Juan killed himself. You mean about that thing, pal? Why would she want to... No, I mean, almost need to frame it on guard. I couldn't find that out from anything she said at all. Then... Then you're saying that testimony was a lie? Not a lie, per se. It just feels like there's more there than meets the eye. Transformers. <laughs> oh. Or that's or that uh, or that what Edgeworth would like us uh, or that's what Edgeworth would like us to believe. I can't read tonight. That's such a dirty trick. <laughs> Get used to it, Pearl. <laughs> Get used to it. <laughs> Even that woman prosecutor was better than that. Kind of. You're not Eh, you're not wrong. Speaking of Miss Von Karma, do you have any more information on her condition? Wasn't she shot this morning? Eh, she should be fine. Miss Von Karma was shot today on the way to the trial by a pistol, pal. But she's gonna be fine, right? I mean, Edgeworth says she was in a stable condition, but... Well, she was shot in the shoulder, so she's okay and still hanging in there. 
They should be done taking the bullet out, so she probably is resting at the hospital. Which one? What? You gonna go visit her? D no. Well, I was kind of thinking about it. He's like, no, it's not, it's not like I like her or anything. Hey, you actually got a heart, don't you? She's like she was being tortured to death, not being able to go to the trial today. So maybe it'll be good for her if you went and let her whip you for a bit, pal. I don't... I don't think that's good for anybody. <laughs> Let's go let her whip us, Mr. No! No! You shall not be whipped today, Pearl. You shall never be whipped. Now I'm definitely not going. Um, let's see. The name of the hospital. Oh yeah, the Hottie Clinic. Aw, oh, motherfucker. That name sends chills down my spine. Well, I guess it can't I guess it can't hurt to stop by and say hi. Oh, I'm gonna see that loser again. Oh no. Oh god, Pearl, no. Pearl Patine behind me. With her hood on. The evil in her eye. Do it. I just don't wanna I just don't wanna talk to the fucking crazy guy who's here. Never thought I'd ever come back to this place. God damn it. Hmm, yes. Are you here to visit a patient? Hmm? Uh, hi. Wait a second, you're... Hmm, yes. I'm Director Hadi. Ho ho ho. Why are you still here? Hmm, yes. What is it? Hmm. Can I help you? You can tell me. Hmm, yes. Director Hadi. Edgeworth? Hmm, yes. I'm Director Hadi. Ho ho. Oh, you're the man from this morning. Hmm, yes. What is it? Uh-huh. Director Francesca. That's Francesca Von Karma. Hmm, you don't need to worry. Hmm, yes, she's in good hands. Because you see, I'm personally taking good care of her. Hmm, yes. <laughs> hmm, yes. And that thing, the surgery, that went well. Hmm, <laughs> yes. You have my gratitude. Looks like Edgeworth doesn't know about this director and his secret. She's looking so pitiful, absolutely terrified. Hmm, yes. But I understand. Hmm, yes. Hmm, yeah. Her, op her opponent was a gun, after all. <laughs> yeah. Her opponent was a gun. Not the person holding a gun, just a gun. It just got up by itself and shot her. And when I snuck up on her real secret-like, she <laughs> she would scream real loud. Hmm, <laughs> yes, okay. I I see. Ah, but she's really cute, too. And when I... <laughs> and when I do that, she whipped me with her whip. Hmm, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Boy, did I cry like a baby, hmm, yes, but I think I could get used to it, hmm. Hmm? Back to your room. You're so mean, so mean, my frisky fresca. But that's good, hmm. Okay, okay, I, hmm, yes, it's time for me to, it's time for my IV drops, hmm, yes. You okay, Von Karma? What are those tulips doing in your hands, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Uh, I knew I shouldn't have come here. I brought you some flowers. Wait, do I have them on me? Like, on my person? Oh, damn it. I was shot in front of the courthouse and my right shoulder- In front of the courthouse? Wow, really? That's ballsy! Who the fuck? Okay. But it's no big deal. This sort of thing happens all the time. A uh, what? How is this how they do things in Germany? How many how many bullet holes do you have in your body? I even have uh, full intentions of running the trial this morning. But but that would have been too much for you. There's no need to act tough in front of us, you know. Regardless, I was dragged here by that man over there. He was so unyielding. One has to one has to wonder if he was simply interested in stealing my case. It was the only logical course of action, given the bullet was still lodged in your shoulder. But by talking over the case, taking over the case, I found myself having to clean up after you and that ir uh, irresponsible deal you made. I think I know what deal he's referring to. Miss Von Karma, you made a deal with Miss Andrews yesterday, didn't you? I don't know what you mean. In order to make sure you got your guilty verdict on Mr. Ungard, you told Miss Andrews to not testify in court today. Hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. You have any proof that I made such a deal? You're denying it? It looks like you were lucky, Mr. Phoenix, right? 
If I had been in court today, this trial would already be over. All while hiding Mrs. Andrews' own crime? That isn't my problem, whether she has tampered with the evidence or not. I have only one objective, to find an unguard guilty of murder. The end justifies the means, Mr. Wright. The end justifies the means. Miss Von Karma. Damn. I can't be mad at you, you're too sexy. <laughs> Adrian Andrews believed you when you said, if you don't tell the truth or what really, uh, of what really happened, then Ungar will be found guilty. And what does that, what that's, uh, that, 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 and what does that have to do with me? Because of that, she's now in danger of being found guilty herself. All because she believed in your words until the very end. That still has nothing to do with me. She's just a weak person, that's all. But you had to know she was. Ow. What the hell are you with me for? I think visit hours here are about over. So, if you'll excuse me. You want your fucking flowers or not? What's wrong? Why did she suddenly cut you off? Aww. Probably because she thinks I had the advantage in that argument. Edgeworth? What the hell was up with you today? What happened today at the trial, Edgeworth? That was not like you at all. I mean, I know you knew about Miss Andrews' condition. You could have made her testify as many times as you wanted, but to go that far? Uh, well, she wouldn't testify about that until I said something. Listen, right? The courtroom is a garden of judgment. I'm putting myself on the line when I stand in there. And that's why I made the witness do the same. It's only natural. So at least, at least you don't take any joy in doing it. Because you were pretty... He was pretty evil when he did it. She's like, he's like, I don't care if you kill yourself. I was like, what the fuck? This guy went crazy. By the way, Edgeworth, you're really angry in court today. That's rare for you. Witness that card. Give it to me. Hurry. Do you have any idea what you're, what you have stupid, uh, do you have any idea what you stupidly, uh, yet inadvertently done? This. I can't believe you hid this from me all this time. That card. What in the world is it? It's my poker card. I lost a bunch of do dollars. <laughs> you mean this? Listen, right? This is top secret information. You absolutely cannot leak this out. Okay, Pearl, leave the room. The special investigation team has existed for a number of years, but few know of it. I understand. Their task is to find the owner of this card. A man called Shelly the Killer. Shelly. Shelly the killer. And just as his name states, he is a killer, an assassin, the best at it, the best at that. An assassin? An assassin? Oh no. That's bad. So who's this Shelly the killer? D Killer is the name of the long standing line of assassins. Long standing? The name first appeared about 100 years ago, I hear. Shelly is the per. per uh, Shelly is the prefers. Uh, 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 uh. Shelly is the professional name of the third heir to the de killer name. So because his professional his professional name is Shelly, he leaves cards with a shell on them. He has a habit of making sure to leave a card by the body of his victims. Why would he do something like that? We think it's part of his duty to his clients. His duty? If he leaves a card, then his clients can be assured it was he who killed the victim. It also serves as insurance against any charges being pushed onto his clients. I see. The killer values the trust between his clients and himself above all else. It seems that this is hor uh, seems like this is one horrible assassin with a moral conscience. I guess that even horrible assassins can exist. So you think this assassin, you think he's the one who did the killing in this case? It would appear that way. The discovery of the card basically confirms it, wouldn't you agree? Shelley the killer, huh? Alright, what about Maya? I noticed something at the trial today. You're behaving in a very strange manner. Is something the matter? I guess I should just tell him. Maya, she's been kidnapped. K kidnapped? What does this kidnapper want? An acquittal. I see. I had no idea. We'll prepare a rescue team as soon as possible and resolve this by tomorrow. R really? Did you hear that, Mr. Nick? Mr. Edgeworth's going to... Stop trying to console me, Edgeworth. I don't need your pity. 
Mr. Nick? There's no way you can find her. We don't have even a single lead to go on. There's only one way to save her. I have to get an acquittal somehow. It's the only way. Right? Listen. You need to know something. Juan was killed by Shelly the Killer. And the client who ordered the job... Was me. Is Matt Ungard. Your own client. Please stop. I can't listen to you. I can't believe that. I see. Well... If you want to continue your investigation, you'll need this. What is it? The hotel right now is restricted to police personnel only, as we're looking for a clue that might lead us to Shelly the Killer. But if you take this with you to the hotel, I'm sure they will let you enter. Letter of introduction. In any case, I must attend to the uh, I must attend to the preparations for Maya's rescue team. We'll meet again if anything should happen. Now, if you'll excuse me. Oh, now if you'll excuse me. I will be on my way. Mr. Nick, do you think Unguard hired an assassin? No way. I mean, he doesn't have a psychic lock. Yeah, I guess not. Maya. Please, all I ask is that you make it home safe and sound. Date and time location? Who cares? Heh <laughs> Guess that even a kidnapper can be a little clumsy. Clumsy enough to drop a card like this for me. And even thought he's, and even uh, even though he said he was an assassin, I bet he's just making that up, like how Nick does with everything in court. Anyways, let's try out this card trick with the card I just found. Sounds like I got the door open. Okay, time to go look around. Time to get the hell out of here. Is that Pooh Bear? What, what is this place? I gotta feel I'm not in the hotel anymore. Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Whoa, are those videos over there? Well, I'll worry about that later. For now, I should be looking for clues. That way, I can show, I can show them the sis and maybe get out of here. What the hell is this? There's a framed picture sitting on the coffee table. It's a picture of a woman. She's kind of pretty. Hey, looks like something's written here. Let's see. I think it says, with love, Celeste. I bet this could be a clue. There's a teddy bear. That's weird. What's figure doing on a sofa in a place like this? I think it's a bear. Oh, how cute. But it's got a lot of cuts and slits on it. Wait, what? It's just fucking up a bear, just going, motherfucker. <laughs> just cutting up Pooh Bear? What are some kind of puzzle or something? What the hell's a satellite doing in here? What is this thing, an antenna? I guess. And this is a VCR? For those of you who don't know what a VCR is, it's an old-timey DVD player back in the day that the dinosaurs used to use. There sure are a lot of electronic gadgets here. But what's an antenna doing here? Look at this big-ass TV. Wow, I've never seen a TV this big before. Now where's the power button? Hmm. Click. Bowie. It's busted. I would so die. I was so die. Oh, wow. I was so die a happy samurai fan if I ever got to see Nickel Samurai on TV like this. Uh, I can't believe I just made a joke about dying. All things considered. What about the computer? Oh hey, it's a computer. A computer. I never really used one before. Really? How long have you been hanging around Phoenix, Maya? You never used the computer? Hmm. I have no idea. I have no idea where the power switch is on this thing. Drat. There goes my plan to use use it somehow to get out of here. Really? It's a... I'm pretty sure universal sign for power that on TV would be on... Okay. It's a doggy door. Huh? Locked? Of course. It doesn't look like I can get and use a car to open this door. There's a little hole at the bottom of the floor. If only I was a little skinnier, then maybe I'll be able to crawl through here. Oh. Oh, this simply will not do. I cannot have you wandering around at will. It seems that your Mr. Wright is truly concerned about you. He is? For now, I would suggest you remain cooperative. If you cannot, there will always... 
There are always in which I can help. Wait, what? There are always ways in which I can help. Ways? You mean dead t dead men tell no tales? Is how the saying goes, correct? <laughs> dead? I'm almost certain I told you on our first meeting. I am an assassin. No way. You're lying. I mean an assassin. People are not always who they appear to be, ma'am. <laughs> hibbity dibbity dibbity. Back at the hospital. Mr. Nick? Hmm? Oh yeah, Pearl. Got caught up in my thoughts and about, about my situation. Miss Edgeworth has left, you know. I guess for now, I have no choice but to believe in Engard. But I think I should listen to his story one more time. Alright. Let's get going, too. Okay. Damn, Maya. Hope you're alright. To the detention center! In which we will talk to our dude bro. March 22nd, detention center visitor's room. Ah, my eye itches like a bitch! <laughs> I'm sorry, but visiting hours are over for today. Aw. Damn it. I have too many questions I need to ask. I'm sorry, but I'm Phoenix Wright, a lawyer for one of the... You're Mr. Wright, you say? Oh, yeah. There's a message here for you. A message? It's from Matt Ungard. Uh, here you go. What does it say? It's really... Is it really something important? I don't know. Well, let's see what it is. To Mr. Lord... <clears throat> to Mr. Lawyer, dude. I've got... I got something really important to tell you. How do I feel... Why do I feel so uneasy about this all of a sudden? Turns out I'm like a murderer, bro. Oh, Mr. Wright. So actually... I have a favor to ask you. I have this cat named Shu. I didn't put I didn't put out a lot of food when I left the house, so he's probably like dead now. So I guess I'm kind of a murderer. You think you can drop by my house and feed Shu for me, dude? My house is just a little ways down from the hotel, alright? That this is terrible. Let's hurry. We have to feed his cat. I'm sure poor Shu's stomach is growling by now. Uh, yeah, I guess. Or it's dead. <laughs> the cat's name is Shu. <laughs> this is a good name for a cat. It's an alright name for a cat. It's like, you know, it's like you name, name your dog Baseball. <laughs> Fucking criminal affairs department. Wow, everybody looks really busy with something or another. Hmm, they're probably straightening the evidence for trial tomorrow. Hey, hurry up with that, will ya? Pass the victims list around. You gotta be kidding, there's over a hundred people here. Hmm, Mr. Nick? Oh, are they looking for, uh... They're looking for the assassin? Mr. Angar really a big, bad criminal? Actually, Pearls, never mind. Sounds like they're working on a different case. A hundred victims? What the hell? What case they're working on? <laughs> Die Hard is long ass movie. You didn't know. You never watched Die Hard before. <laughs> All right, now, Mister Nick, let's go look for clues. We have to for Mystic Maya. You shall not pass, Miss Oldbag. Don't divulge my name and turn into gr and turn into a gas. You spiky headed pit footer, pit father, pit pitter. Fa uh. Never watched Die Hard before. <laughs> it's all right. Die Hard's not as crazy as people uh, make it out to be. It's on like the same level as like Mission Impossible for me. Because of you, I've been uh, I've been made to look like a bad guy again. Although I did get a piece of gum from Edgy Boy, just as he promised. But it's <laughs> okay. All right, calm down, Olbog. Ol Olbog? Did I just call her Olbog? Ugh. <laughs> you alright, Pearl? Ah, Miss Olbag. Is she having a heart attack? Keep your hands off me! This helmet is airtight, no air gets in here, no air gets out. That's... That's terrible. Uh, then why do you keep putting it on? Hmm. Don't think you can get me to move with silly questions. You're gonna have to defeat me if you want to get by. I didn't mean to press that. I'm not hearing this. Well, here. Get out of my face. Hmm. 
Maybe if I show her this letter I got from Edgeworth. Miss Oldbag, if you would like, if you would look at the bat. What? What do you want me to look at this worthless piece of... It's from Edgy Poo. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, is that her perfume? Pheromone, pheromone de, de Amar? What? Pheromone of the heart, I guess? Let's see here. Would you please allow this uns... Uh, uns <laughs> okay. Would you... <laughs> wow. Why, why, why does the invitation say that? Why do you have to... I gotta diss me inside my own invitation. Yours truly, Miles Edgeworth. Y yours truly? Hmm, man's good at flattery. Fine. But only because Edgepoo said so, you understood? Letter of introduction, give it to Miss Oldbag. I just thought of something I have to do. Remember, no messing around. You do, you do anything bad, and I won't let you off the hook. It looks like she has a strong feelings for Mr. Edgeworth. That may be, but you know nothing. <laughs> you know nothing's gonna come of it. That's so mean, Mr. Nick. Feelings are meant to be told and share. Ow. Every time we talk about love, I always end up with a handprint on my face somehow. <laughs> um, so anyways, I didn't mean to press that, goddammit. Let's continue our investigation. Okay. Right, tat 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 Why the hell are you back? What? What now? One little thing before I forget. You can't go in the guard's room today. Why? The police main investigation team is going to be there all day, you hear? I wonder if they're the team in charge of investigating to kill her. So don't go in there. Set one foot in there and you'll face the wrath of Windy Old Bag. Oh, damn it. Alright, well, can I... Living room. Huh? Living room? Is this his room? This can't... What? Living room? Unguard mansion living room. How do I... What? <laughs> How do I go from the office to the detention center to the police department, to the hotel, to a mansion. Hmm, sure is dark. Why do I gotta go to the hotel to go to the mansion? That makes no sense. <laughs> I'll go turn on the lights. Oh, look at that sweet ride. Wow. So this is what, this is what Star's house looked like. It must be nice to be rich. Unlike me, who can't pay myself or my clients. Well, clients, what am I saying? Or my employees. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's find Shu, the kitty cat. Shu! Where's my shoe, Mr. Magoo? So I get... They gave the cat its own theme. They gave the cat its own little theme. It's a version of Maya's theme. I miss Maya so much. <laughs> so I guess this is Shu. Oh, what a lovely cat. Hello, Shu. Meow. The cat seems to like pearls. You gonna steal it? Mm, pardon me. You son of a bitch. May I help you with something, mister? Oh, uh, we're lawyers, actually. I'm Mr. Ungard's lawyer. That, the Masters. Then you must be Mr. Wright. Yes. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet your wonderful self. I am the family butcher, John Doe. That, that, yeah, that, mm. I don't like that name. <laughs> nice to meet you. Wait, wait, this makes no sense. Why would, why would Matt tell me to come to his house to feed his cat if the cat was lonely if he has a butler? You don't work for Matt. You're a liar. You're, you're an imposter. You must know all sorts, uh, you must know all sorts of things about Mr. Uh, Angar, right? Honestly, sir, I don't believe my master is capable of such a foul deed as murder. Because, as you see, it was me. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of his master or his affairs. Hmm, how typically butler-like, as it were. Mr. Doe, how long have you served at this, at this residence? Well, sir, I would have, I would have to say about a year. And by that, I mean about, about 15 minutes ago. 
when I put this costume on. And, uh, anything else? How does Phoenix not instantly notice, like, Hey, aren't you the dude who, like, kidnapped Maya? <laughs> Aren't you the guy who went like, excuse me, ma'am, you have a phone call? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak with. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I would have thought Mr. Guard to kind of have a maid over a butler. Probably, most likely. I would love a butler. Butlers are cool. <laughs> uh, that's a very cute cat you got there. It is my duty to take care of him. The master's rather f uh, fancy shoe. And anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for the lowly servant to speak of the family cat. What? <laughs> well then, I guess I don't need this piece of paper anymore. Matt note crumbled into the ball and thrown away. Well, I'm afraid I must take my leave now. Oh, we should probably get going ourselves. Ah, uh, so young and yet already so accom uh, accomplished. As a matter of law, I feel like you can unzip his face. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like I, 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 like I guess it's stitches, but it's so uncomfortable to look at. But there's also a lot to be proud of being. But there's also a lot to be proud of being a butler in charge of a house and all. Thanks for your compliment, sir. People are not always who they appear to be. Now, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> Maya's right behind that door. I just looked at the door. She's right behind that door. She's literally right in there. Maya, you in here? There's a small door in the- Go through it, Pearl. Go through it. You can do it. I bet it's for Mr. Ungar's cat to use. Oh, you mean shoe? The door. It's locked tight. Well... I guess, I guess keep noisy people, like me, from entering it. Pearl, you can just go through. Pearl, just do it. He's not looking. Just go through. Alright. Back to the, the food is still on the table. <laughs> Hasn't been changed once. Looks like we're the only ones here. And yet, the hotel seems so busy somehow. Probably because the police team is scouring for clues about D-Killer. Huh, I thought we would have ran into, um, into Will. Mr. Powers. What about Adrian? Is she hanging around in here? Oh, hey, Lotta. Hey, city boy. Lotta, you're still here? Reckon, course. An investigating photographer eats a... How did you get in? An investigative photographer eats her stars on her ability to snap uh, snap up the scoop, yeah? This hotel just has the aura of... There there it goes again. <laughs> just finished Die Hard. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> there goes... There goes the song again. Material Girl playing in the background. I'm a living in a material world. I am a material girl. I love it. You know, like something's always happening about. Eh. But do you have any? Do you have a? Uh, you have a camera? Give reckon, reckon given, reck given, whatever. Fuck. You're confusing me, Lotta. A photographer's got to have cameras out out the ears like corn to be real pro, you know. So I'm hanging around here. Speaking of cameras and feeding the mouth, do you have my? Do you have mine? Uh, your bread? What? Do you have mine, you bread? Oh, you're bread thief. Why are you calling me Aladdin? Why can't you drop that thief thing already? Oh. I don't I don't have your cam oh wait, no, I do have your camera. Should I? Can I can I tell you that old bags has it? Old bag has your camera. Oh damn. I guess maybe it's a talk option? Camera, there we go. It's about midnight where you are, Merry Christmas, yeah. It's it's like three where I'm at. Is it three? Yeah, it's three it's exactly three. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Merry Christmas. It's all good night. I did I did actually think about playing uh 
midnight of midnight i did think about playing nightmare before christmas on stream the game made by like capcom where he uses the soul robber or where the fuck and then he does like these music dance with oogie or whatever ah <laughs> oh, my baby my sixteen hundred dollar baby what's with the red coated uh, pros uh prosecutor anyhow the guy told me it was evidence and refused to give it back to me well that's kind of how it is hey hey you're the red coat's friend ain't you so put in a few good words for me and get my camera back you want me to do what listen nag the guy real good for about five hours and i guarantee he'll give it back why don't you do it on your own so about the note that was inside your camera case oh the ditty i wrote yeah can i believe uh can i believe what you've written you mean the stuff about Ungard shoving his manager lady onto Cordea? Yeah. Ah, uh, well, I reckon you best not be believing in that. What? Look, I sort of wrote that on a whim, you know? Writing whatever came in mind. Whatever came to mind? Yeah. When you get down to it, it's just a lot of random... It's just a lot of random bull doers. Do dooters? Dooters. <laughs> okay. Why are you disappointed, Pearl? Hey, what's with you? You're staring at me like a grand, like my grandpa used to. Huh? Hey, and why do you look like you suddenly got older too? Or am I just shrinking? Or am I just shri uh, shrinking? Shrinking? Ugh. Hmm. I want to ask you about the night of the murder. What? You're really gonna shell out the bucks for that info? I got what? What? <laughs> oh, you really gotta shell out? The uh, damn it! Ah, my mind is. Blowing up! Lotta, you were loitering in the hallway the night of the murder, were you not? Well, kinda, but... Brace yourself, Phoenix. Here it comes. I didn't exactly hang around here the entire time, you know? Followed a few stars around. Got a few autographs, shook a few hands, had a soda pop. <laughs> soda pop? <laughs> Wanna... Want a soda pop? Want a pudding pop? <laughs> you know, with the soda and the pop and the all, oh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> With a few of them, too. Looks like she wasn't here the entire time that night. The security lady was also in the hallway the whole time, either. Or wasn't in the hallway the whole time, either. I guess this means there was no no one who can tell us uh, who can tell us who came and went that night. Well, I reckon it's time for me to get going. A tabloid photographer without a camera is just a tabloid, huh? Hmm, yeah, I guess so. Keep yourselves together out there, you hear? I'm coming to see you in court tomorrow. Uh, okay, I'll see you then. Hey, you too there, little, uh, keep, uh, little one. Keep up the good work, okay? Okay. Don't be too picky about your food now. Okay. And make sure you do all your homework, you hear? Okay. And if you happen to find yourself a camera, make sure you bring it to me. Would you please give it a rest? I love Lotta. I can't hate her. She's too cool. Back to Mr. Cordea's office. Office? Oh. Did I say office? Uh, is everything okay in here? M Mr. Nick! What is that unworldly, ghastly, unworldly gas moaning? Uh, ghastly moaning. Better not be Adrian hanging herself. Uh, I, I hate evil ghosts! I don't think it's a ghost. Not yet, anyways. Maybe it's a demon. Excuse me, what? What you calling a demon? Uh, zoinks! <laughs> zoinks, Scoob! It's like an alien! Who are you calling an alien? Oh, it's just you, Miss Oldbag. What are you doing here? What's wrong with the youngins today? I came down here to pay my respects to my poor Juan. My poor Juan, he was the chosen one. Juan, why? Why was you do it? You're disturbing me. I mean disturbing you. You're fucking up a crime scene. Get out of here. Please talk to me about the night of the murder. Just one more time. I talked about it plenty at the trial. I was fooled, tricked, deceived by the fraud of the photographer and her note. She was loitering around here with the embass- with the embass- uh, em embellic- eh. Look on her face. With the embellic look on her face. Hmm. Okay, got it. Now hold on a second there, you little pimp squeak. 
If you're gonna take notes, at least at least make mine sound better than that. Oh, all right. Now I've seen everything. But you know, I was working that night too, doing my job, out of my own business. So it's not like I had time to waste standing around here the whole night. I was wondering if I could, if you could tell me a bit more about Mr. Cordell. He was the most popular star, you know, especially where it counts in my book. But I heard that he was lagging behind in, po and in the polls against Mr. Ungard. Um, well, that's just a recent thing. Bad luck and all that, you know? But he was going to become even a bigger star than he used to be. Look, just look at the mountain of presents. It's a show of, it's a show of the mountain of feelings that his fan had for him. Fan? Fans. Yet, the mountain is pretty big and certainly nothing to shake at Ugh, Nothing to shake a stick at. Shake a stick at? What the hell? Mr. Nick? Mm, what is it, Pearl? The presents. They're all bears, right? Bears! Bears everywhere! Bears in your hairs? Bears in the drawers? Bears in your underwear? There are bears everywhere. The bears sing bears. The honey bears. <laughs> She's got a point. There isn't a single thing here that isn't a bear. Oh my god, it's bears! All, all of Mr. Cordeo's presents from the fans seem to be bears. Ah, oh, that's because you can think of one without thinking about bears. Bears! Bears everywhere! Why bears? Why? Why, why, why? why bears? <laughs> why don't you? You don't know? When my dear Juan was training, he fought bare-handed with a bear. He refused to give in and let the bear win, but after the fight, they became friends. Wow, what a heartwarming story. How's that heartwarming? Look, it's just like in those young- it's just like in those young and people's dramas. I can see those two tuckered now- uh, tuckered out. Down by the river going, Hey, you. You sure can fight. You too, bub. You too. Did all that really happen? It's in his biography, bub. What a load of crock. So ever, so ever since then, fans have been giving him bears as presents. Yeah, nice. Bears. But why would they send to his hotel room? I'm Uncle Bear, and I say it's barely 8 o'clock. What? <laughs> what if the bear started sounding like... Like Nixon? I'm Bear. <laughs> what if, what's that infernal racket? It's so when the present's going off. Sounds like it's already 8, 8 p.m. Way past your bedtime. Ah, uh, that startled me. I thought I was going to die for a second. 8 p.m. That's the time when the award ceremony ended that night, remember? Time sure flies. Hard to believe it's been two days since the ceremony. The transceiver. Hello? Hello? This is not a phone. Ma Maya! How's Maya? You haven't heard her, have you? It seems you were not able to fulfill your end of the bargain, Mr. Attorney. I have heard the news. So it would seem my present did you no good. No, Mystic Maya! One more day, please. That's all I ask for one more day. I'll, I'll get a not guilty verdict. I'm sure this time, please. I suppose, if I must. I need the acquittal more than anything else, after all. Please. Please let Maya say something. I want to hear if she's alright. Alright. Hiss. Then hiss. A little. What's with the static all of a sudden? Hello? Hello? It seems... Bad. Connect. Ah, damn it. Did the transceiver just suddenly break? I'll excuse me. Oh, you'll excuse me, probably. Well, that's not good. What happened? I don't know. All of a sudden, it became nothing but static. Ah, Mystic Maya. Why did the transceiver suddenly break like that? Maybe someone messed with the, uh... Maybe someone messed with the, um, whatchamacallit? The antenna that was in the room. I'm assuming, I'm assuming the transceiver bounces off of that. I should probably have an electronics expert look at this. The sooner the better. Electronic expert? Who the hell would be that? I don't... Hmm. 
Who do we know that's good at electronics? Maybe someone in criminal affairs? No, no one's there. Hotel lobby. Living room. I guess, uh... Who's good with electronics? I mean, I assume Lotta might be able to help. Probably not. I don't think she's good with electronics. Or Adrian. Huh. Guess I'll head back to the office. Hey, welcome back, pal. I thought I made you a little something for dinner. That, that's nice. Thanks. A rich man's luxurious full-course meal. Out of the can. That is. I'm sorry you went through all the trouble to cook. But I don't have time to eat. Oops. Looks like you don't have a can opener, pal. You gotta be kidding. And here I thought he was already whipping up something. Oh, I know. There's one on the, uh, there's one on the way I know. How to be help- wait, there's- uh, There's one way I know how to be helpful. Ask me about anything, pal, you want. Go ahead. Well, since he's here and offering, I wonder what I should try and ask him about. What about this transceiver? Can you help me with this shit? The transceiver? Oh, Mr. Nick. You should ask Mr. Scruffy Detective about the thing. What thing? Oh, yeah. This thing just came- uh, This thing just broke. Up and broke all of a sudden. It's broke, pal? When I was talking to the kidnapper, it suddenly broke into static. Look, it sounds like this. I don't hear any static, pal. Uh, huh? Maybe it fixed itself? That's strange. I'm sure it was making a strange, uh, a loud static noise. Hmm, maybe. Maybe because one is super close by? Maybe what? Maybe it was electromagnetic interference, pal. Electric magnetic interference. Oh man, the amount of times I had to deal with that. Why is Gumshoe a housewife now? Because he's fucking, he got fired and now he's working for me apparently. Which I don't know how the hell I'm gonna pay him because I'm broke myself. At least I assume Phoenix is always broke. It seems that way, not gonna lie. I don't think Phoenix has any money. And I don't even think I pay Maya for all the work she does. And you know anything about this card? Oh yeah. And about this card? Card. Edgeworth, for some reason, went pale the instant he saw this. Hey, I know what this is. You do? No matter what, uh, no matter what way you look at it, I say it's a picture of a shell. Oh, also, they didn't trust you that much. I guess. Um, that's it. Oh yeah, that's right. Mr. Edgeworth really likes th those those uh cook shell cook snail things. Escar uh, got. <laughs> What, is, what are they called? That's card gut? Or something like that? Mr. Nick. I think we just solved the mystery of why Mr. Edgeworth's face turned pale, right? As expected, Gumshoe has no clue. Huh. I don't think there's anything else. Let me see. Tell me about the electromagnetic interference. Ah, uh, so what is this electromagnetic interference? It's something that happens when a radio wave gets mixed up with another signal, pal. And trust me, it's a pain in the ass. Oh, when you put it like that, I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, for example, when a cell phone goes off next to your computer screen. The stuff on the screen gets kind of fuzzy and starts acting funny, right? Huh? Computer? Hmm. Um, it's like when you use the dryer next to the TV, and the screen starts looking weird. Oh, yeah. TV does do that. Hmm. Oh, so that's what you call- well, that's what you're talking about? She seems amazingly happy at being able to understand this. So the room you were in- <clears throat> So the room you were in when the- when the inter- eh, can't read. So the room you were in when the interference to the transceiver happened? There's gotta be something there that's sending out very strong radio waves. Something like a clock? Like a listening device or something. Are you telling me the room is bugged? Huh? Hey, speaking of that, where were you when that happened? We were in Mr. Cordeo's room, the scene of the scene of the murder. What? That's it. I'm gonna sneak into the precinct and get a bug sweeper. I'll meet you at the crime scene later, right? All right, pal. Uh, wait, Gumshoe. 
Oh yeah, baby, it's investigation time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. I'm gonna shoot someone. We we should be going too, Mr. Nick. Alright, let's go. Uh, I was about to head to Hottie Clinic for some reason. Someone bugged the room. It's in the bear. The bear has all the secrets. God, this menu confuses me half the time. Is it in the computer? Is it on- is it- is it in the bear? Hey, you finally got here, pal. Sorry to keep you waiting. Do you have the, um, bug sweeper? Hmm, well, you see. I got busted trying to sneak in, pal. Then suddenly, I'm staring at the precinct doors. From the outside, I mean. So yeah, I couldn't get- I just couldn't get one of the police bug sweepers. What do you mean you couldn't get one? We need that item. Hey, calm down, pal. Didn't say I, uh, I didn't say I didn't get one. Just not the police's. Wow. So this is a bug sweeper. It looks a little broken. Hey, this was made when I was in elementary school, pal. Oh, by who? By me. Me, of course. Ah, seeing this sure brings back memories. You made a bug sweeper? Really? Hey, don't look down on, on to it, pal. Sure, it looks a little beat up. But I put my heart and soul into building this puppy here. Your heart and soul? It'll work. Trust me, pal. It'll do the job. But... But... But you can't see the sensitivity. But you can't set the sensitivity. So it's gonna... It's gonna beep at anything that gives off electromagnetic waves. But isn't it better that way? Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, anyways... Since I brought it all the way here, since I brought it all this way, might as well give it a world, right, pal? I'm getting that sinking feeling again. Okay, now I'll let you now I'll tell you how to use this baby. There's a listening device or something, other sort, uh, other sort of bug hidden in this room, pal. So we're gonna find it, right? Right. Now first, let's turn the sweeper on. Next, move the sweeper around to give the room a real, a real thorough looking. It's so a real thorough look, lucky seat. Fuck. <laughs> Can't read. The sweeper will let you know how strong of a signal it's picking up, so keep an eye on it, okay? Once you find something that gives off a lot of radio waves, press the X button. There's a lot of things here that's gonna that's gonna give off radio waves. So let's take a look. Why didn't they fucking have this earlier in any early cases? This is kinda cool. <laughs> Let's take a look at everything and everything, okay? Alright. I'm gonna go stand outside and keep an eye out. Give me a yell if you find the bug. Got it, pal? I mean, there's a light in there, but... Lamp, check. Listening device? Nope. There's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of lamps in this room, aren't there, Mr. Nick? Yeah. And they're all on. You shouldn't do that, Mr. Nick. Don't you know that's wasteful? Yeah, I'll be more con- uh, con- eh. Uh, eh. Whatever, Pearl. I can't read. Stop using big words. Alright. Is it here? Is it in the- It's on the desk? Behind the painting. Oh, it's a light! Hmm. And the plant. That's a cell phone. That's a bear. Has to be one the bear. Well, not that one. That's a TV. It's a phone. It's gotta be in a bear. Well, yeah, of course. All this gets off electricity. Is it in the big bear? Baby bear. That's the clock bear. It's the evil one, isn't it? Damn it. Huh. Well, that's the clock. Oh, that's the hair dryer. Fuck. Sure it's not... Eh. Usually I would check behind the painting or mirror or something. I 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking. I mean, I can check everything and anything, but air conditioner. Where the hell is it? A little bear? Damn it! <laughs> is it just picking up the lamp again? Yeah, it's picking up the lamp again. It has to be one of these fucking bears. There's no way it's not. Come on, Pooh Bear. Where are you? Now, is it pointing... Is it pointing to the fridge? Yeah, it's pointing to the fridge. It's picking up the fridge. Huh. This is... This is just a giant stuffed teddy bear. It's the biggest one I've ever seen. Hey, so did you find it yet? The listening device, I mean? No, not yet. But this bear's eye. Let's see, let's see. A perfectly normal stuffed bear with some really strong radio waves. Sounds like you found the device to me, pal. Let's, let's dig this big fella's eye out and see what we've got. No, you can't. Such, such a violent act. No! Hmm. That's... It's a miniature camera. It looks like there's more. There's a transmitter and a timer. A what a... A what a... A what a what a meter? A transmitter, pal. Oh. Is this more of the high-tech stuff? So what do we got? So, what is a transmitter? It's a device that sends out footage, uh, that sends out the footage the camera took to a specific destination. It's like a video version of listening device, pal. It looks like it's attached to a small clock-like, uh, clock-like thing. Oh, that's a timer, pal. You can set it, you can set it to turn the camera on and record it at certain times. You can set it for a certain time? Yep. Let's see. This looks like it was set to start at 8 p.m. and go for one hour. 8 p.m.? That was the time the award ceremony ended. There's no date. There's no date. Uh, God. I like a hiccup. There's no date set, so it's been recording every night, I guess. M Mr. Detective, how long has the bear been there? Hmm, I'm pretty sure it's been here since the night of the murder. Then, then maybe... Maybe this camera caught the murder on tape. What? And if you think about the angle the bear is at, it's bound to have had a clear shot of the whole crime, pal. Oh, shit. So this tiny thing is a camera. Yep, it's a pinhole CC, uh, CCD camera, pal. It's small, high-grade video camera, mostly used in security systems. So it's a video camera. It runs out. On, it runs on a battery, which comes with comes with it in a set. There's no videotape in this camera. This this is the only uh, this is only the camera part here, pal. The tape recorder with the tape inside is somewhere else. Somewhere else. The footage is changed into radio waves and then it's sent to the record uh, recorder. So it's sort of like a TV broadcast, isn't it? Hey, you know, you're right. Well, this is some pretty damning evidence. So there was a camera in the bear's eye, and it was dis and it was distinguished as a present as distinguished, disguised. Why why did I forget how to say the word disguised? It was disguised as a present, <laughs> and I'm sure it was here on the night of the murder, pal. It's pretty big, so it stands out pretty well in my end, in my mind. Ugh. But who gave Mr. Cordea this present? I don't know, pal. But. This means means that some uh, someone out there has got a video of what happened here that night. Isn't there any way we can find out who the person is? It's impossible, pal. Radio waves can be sent almost anywhere, so there's no real way to find out. Oh. Is there really no way to find out? Hmm. I got it. What? Hey, pal. Let me borrow this mini camera for a bit. What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go around to the elect, uh, electronic shop and see if we can find who bought this. 
But that's impossible. I mean, it's already 9 p.m. Leave it to me. Even if I have to search all night, I'll find your man, pal. Spy camera and transmitter given to Detective uh, Detective Gumshoe. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. It's investigation time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching. I'm gonna go shoot something. <laughs> He's gone. Yeah. But Mr. Scruffy Detective sure is a nice man. Eh, that's true. He's pushing himself so hard, all for Mystic Maya's sake. It's a mystery how you always manage to do things in the most inefficient ways, right? Is that you, Edgeworth? Are you condescending me again? You have to excuse me. Oh my, you have to excuse me. <laughs> so I saw, I saw the, uh, I saw the voice that you said Prodes gave to Edgeworth, and it's hilarious. <laughs> oh man. Like how, and for some reason he has like this ongoing thing where, where Phoenix Wright and Edgeworth are like <laughs> secret lovers. And then Maya's just like, man, you're a bitch. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. <laughs> He's like. Oh, you'll have to excuse me. I've heard your conversation just now. <laughs> Indubitably. Edgeworth, what are you doing here? A rescue team has been created and deployed. I can't say I'm optimistic, but we have to move forward one step at a time. I see. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. We still have to find her. Hmm. So, there was a spy camera hidden inside the stuffed animal. You're one lucky man, right? Huh? Do you know the stuffed bear, little girl? Uh, I have no idea. Hmm, of course not. The maker of this bear is very expensive, a luxurious brand from overseas. It's completely handmade and only a small number of these are ex exported here. How do you know so much about this fucking bear? What? The camera and the transmitter that Scatterbrain Detective took with him are dead ends. Things like those can be bought can be bought anywhere. However, this bear is different. By tracking how it's got into the country, this bear can tell us who the buyer is. Can you really do that, Mr. Nick? Can you really? Well, I guess so. Hmm, it's 9 p.m. I think I can still make it in time. I'll be taking this for now. I'm sure you have other things you have to do. Stuffed bear snatched up by Edge. He just picks up the bear and just goes, This is mine now. I'll see you in court, Mr. Phoenix Wright. See you soon, Wright. What? Wait! What? Why are you doing this? I have no interest in explaining myself to someone who cannot comprehend. But besides that, Mr. Wright, until court reconvenes tomorrow, you should be concerning yourself with this question. Who was the person that murdered Juan Cordea? The real killer. Do you really still think it was, uh, it was, oh god. Every time I see your name, I want to say Andre, fuck. <laughs> Adrian Andrews, god damn it. To be honest, I don't know anymore. You still have a little time left. Find the truth, right? Everything begins with the truth. Well, if I... Everything begins with the truth. Of course everything begins with the fucking truth. Giant stuffed bear snatched up by Edgeworth. Juan Cordea's real killer, Miss Andrews Pass. The kidnapper whose sole condition is an acquittal for Matt Ungard. And this card. Is it part of Exodia? Exodia! Obliteration! And then Seto Kai was just like, No! Maya, the only way I can save her, save you now is to find all the answers to this case tonight. I don't understand what your real intentions are, Edgeworth. But as you said, all I can do for now is find the truth. To be continued. Damn. So, is Edgeworth still taking over the case? I'm assuming. I'm assuming Von Karma can't come back and take her spot. It's past 9 p.m. already, isn't it? I wonder. I wonder if Mr. Edgeworth has already found Mr. Kamaya. These things take time. I'd probably say not. The police are professional, Pearls. 
They'll find her, so don't worry. I think it's <laughs> I think it's Bond Karma. Wait, what? <laughs> you think what do you mean you think it's Bond Karma? Like is she gonna be she's gonna come and take her spot back? Oh my god. The ice that I had in my cup melted and my water tastes weird now because of it. Damn it. <laughs> You're right. I'm mad. I'm mad my water tastes weird. <laughs> let's let's talk to Pearl. A real killer. So the real person who killed Mr. Cordea was that assassin, Mr. Shelley the Killer, right? In the car Man Maya I mean Maya. <laughs> Man Pearl. You're so you're so adorable. As my little assistant. You're perfect. Still like Maya though. I, I like you both equally. 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 Why am I saying that? Equally. And the car Miss Andrews found at the crime scene is proof of something. But if that's the case, then new questions come to mind. Who is the one that hired the killer to begin with? Who is his client? You mean, who asked for the murder? The person didn't want dirty their own hands and blood. But whoever this client is, they're still a killer. Who could have hired the assassin? Do you think it was Miss Andrews? I mean, I did think about it, not gonna lie, but I don't think she's the one who did it. But if she was the client, then why go through the effort of stabbing the knife into the corpse herself? But if Miss Andrews wasn't the client, then, no, it can't be. Matt Ungard himself. I still don't think it's Matt. Hordea, 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 why did I say that? I took Juan and Cordea and fused them together. Juan probably ordered a hit on him own self. On, on him own self? Uh, I can't speak. Or a hit on himself. He went, I'm gonna kill gonna kill myself in the most weird way possible. And I'm gonna frame it. I'm gonna frame it on Matt as a final fuck you. <laughs> if Mr. On Guard really did hire the assassin, then he's not innocent after all. From now, it would uh he would be guilty of the crime. But it can't be Mr. On Guard, right? I mean, when we first talked with them. Mr. On Guard. I'd like to ask you one more question. Did you kill Mr. Juan Cordea? Well, I mean, he didn't. He didn't kill. In the DS, the bear disappears when Edgeworth takes it? Oh, wow, really? <laughs> I was expecting the bear to just poof out of the background. I was surprised it didn't. Alright, so we're clear, dude. I didn't kill anyone, and that includes Juan Cordea, okay? I mean, your phrasing is, did he kill anyone? And technically, he didn't if he was the client. Now, did he order out a hit? Actually, that reminds me. Did you remember something, Mr. Nick? Yeah, something Miss Andrews said at the trial today. She said something interesting. Hmm, so what is this interesting thing? Oh, that's right. You didn't hear it, did you, Pearls? Juan had to, be every, uh, Juan had to bet everything on the Jammin' Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix... He was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyways. Going down with him. I thought she was just referring to the conference. It looked like somehow Juan had his hands, uh, had his hands a secret, uh, eh. Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Hmm, Mr. Ungard's secret. What is this secret? I don't know yet. But for now, let's think about it in this way. Mr. Cordea was going to reveal the secret. That means... Mr. Ungard had plenty of motive to have Mr. Cordea silenced. Did I just say... <sighs> did I say Ungard or did I say Juan? For some reason, I, I feel like I mixed them up. I, I instantly forgot what came out my mouth. Which means we have to meet Mr. On Guard. There's no way around it. <sighs> but detention visiting hours are over. And it's nine at night. Wow, it's really getting late, isn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it's past 9 p.m. already. But we still have some things to prepare for tomorrow's trial. 
There's still the matter of the secret Miss, uh, Mr. Cordea held about Mr. Engard, Miss Andrews' real intentions. These are two things I must know tonight. But aren't visiting hours over at the, deten at the detention center? Hmm, I'm sure we'll think of something, Pearls. Don't you worry. We got this, Pearl. We can do it. Is Mr. Powers here? Oh, shit, it's old bags. Hey, wait! What is it, Whippersnapper? All I know is nothing that I can, uh... All I know is nothing that has anything to do with you is ever good. Like just now, I was handed this strange device for who knows what reason. And I was told to use it to search the whole hotel. That's the bug sweeper, isn't it? One gumshoe made. I don't know, and frankly, I don't care, but the request came from Edgypoo, so... Edgeworth? And he said... If you feel angry, direct your anger at the uns unsophisticated lawyer. So I'm gonna feel free to direct all my anger towards you. Ugh, thanks, a bundle, Edgeworth. What a pal you are. This is obviously top secret, so you had better keep it to yourselves. I heard the I heard they found a spy camera hidden in one of the one of the presents. Very interesting. I'm sure it was, you know. It was to catch where Juan in the middle of scandalous meeting. Scandalous? What does that mean? It means, well, you know, the gossip that was going around about my dear Juan. Oh, you mean the thing about Miss Andrews? But I'm sure she must have had some reason for getting close to Mr. Cordea. I'll, I'll let you know, uh, I'll let you in on another secret, youngin. I know who planted the spy camera. It was that obnoxious, puffy-haired photographer girl. The nerve of some people. Spying on people by herself, as if it wouldn't, as if I wouldn't want to see it for myself too. Wow, the alien actually admitted her true intentions for a change. I don't know what you're thinking exactly, but I can bet it's nothing good. But I didn't say anything. So, you want to know about Juan and the manager, right? Actually, as I heard it, I think I they were something of a of a refreshing pair. What? Of a refreshing pair of those two. Oh? I'll tell you, Juan really welcomed the manager with opened arms, I heard. The manager? Who are you talking about? You don't know? The manager woman Juan had. It's a shame she killed herself, though. Oh. You're, you're thinking about Miss Celeste Impacts, Miss, An uh, Miss Andrew's mentor, right? Yes, yes, that one. That Celeste girl. She was supposed to get married, you know. This is news? Married? You mean to Matt, uh, Mr. Horkett? No, to Matt, probably. Really? You young, as, young, uh, young kids don't know anything, do you? The girl Celeste killed herself three days after their marriage announcement. What? Three days after the marriage announcement? What in the... Why would Miss Impacts want to kill herself? She was gonna... Can I just point out something? Everyone is just so cool with just talking about murder and shit around like a fucking nine-year-old. No one sits there and goes like, Pearl, can you leave the room for a moment? <laughs> well, that's because... She was thrown away, you see, by Juan. What? But they were gonna get married, right? They promised each other. They held a grand announcement session, but three days later, Juan suddenly canceled their marriage. Isn't, is that true? It was in the weekly magazines. But why? But why? Why would he do that? It's so beautiful. That was not in the, uh, that was not in the magazine, unfortunately. I see. That night after Juan called off the wedding, that manager, Celeste, killed herself. How terrible. I wonder what happened between those two. But why? How would Juan do it? So terrible. So, uh, I don't, I don't think I'm... I'm pretty sure there's nothing I need to do here with you. Thanks for the inform- why did I click talk? Thanks for the information. On that night, there must have been at least a few hundred people here. Hmm. Guess the police are done with their questioning and investigating. It looks like things here in the lobby have finally calmed down. 
am I supposed to check the lobby or something? I don't have the... I don't have the, the bug detector, so... Criminal Affairs, Living Room, I guess I'll head to Criminal Affairs. It feels sort of tense in here, doesn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it does. I wonder if something happened. You're Mr. Ungar's lawyer, right? Yes, sir. Well, we finally found just the person we're looking for. A real decisive witness. A decisive. Wait, no. Yeah, that's the word. Decisive. <laughs> Why? Why did I... Why did I stutter on that? A decisive witness? You mean for... You mean for the guard case? We're taking the witness statement right now. Gotta hand it to Mr. Edgeworth. What's Edgeworth up to now? Who is this witness? I think you know this person quite well, Mr. Lawyer. Huh? M Mr. Nick? Between the kidnapper's demands and how this... And now this, I can't see any... And I can't see any way to win here. Oh yeah. Mr. Edgeworth wanted me to tell you something. He did? Even though visiting hours are no longer over at the detention center, he wanted me to, uh, eh. He wanted me to grant you special permission, so there you go. What? I've already called them, so they know. Go on, go talk to your heart's content. Thanks very much. This is such good news, Mr. Nick. Go talk to your heart's content. Ugh. Sounds like the police are pretty sure they have tomorrow's trial in the bag. Edward's got me back. Of course he got me back. What a son of a bitch. Him and his beautiful chiseled jaw and his perfect salt and pepper hair. His perfect fucking button-up shirt. Snazzy dresser. I'm sure they must have must have transferred Mrs. Andrews here by now. So that means that both Mr. Ungard and Miss Andrews are in the detention, uh, detention center. Now then, whose story do I want to hear? Dude, it's like Mr. Wright. I hope you win. I hope you can get me off the hook tomorrow. I'm counting on you, bro. I hope so too. Edward just dropped the bombshell on me by saying that Juan Cordea was killed by an assassin, and that the assassin's client is. This man. Matt Ungard. What's wrong? Mr. Ungard. There's something I must know with 100% certainty. Hmm. You seem kind of different. You're totally not like your usual lawyer, dude self. Dude self, bro? Rodeo dude? I'm about the press conference. You mean the one where Juan was gonna dress up as the Nickel Samurai? Yeah. I heard a little more about it from Miss Andrews. It looked like somehow Juan had his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Could you please uh, fill me on what the secret is, please? Five? Huh. I knew this was coming. Mr. Nick, don't tell me. Psychic locks. You said a secret, right? I don't have any idea what you're talking about, do you, dude? Do you know about Mr. Cordea and Miss Andrew's relationship? Well, it was all over the tabloids, dude. Uh, but I don't know any, uh, any of the details. Is what you mean? Look, how many times do I have to tell you? I don't care what Juan did to his life. Miss Andrews, she was the purpose in, uh, she had a purpose in mind when she, uh, when she started seeing Mr. Cordea. Her mentor was Miss Cordea's manager. Miss Andrews was going to get Miss Celeste Impact suicide note from him. Celeste? Does that jog any memories? Why did I say it like that? Does that jog any memories? Dude, I suddenly just got a totally hungry. You up for like pizza? It's my treat, bro. I must ask a very important question. This will. This will choose whether you are a member of society or a heathen. Pineapples on pizza, yes or no? There is only one right answer. Hmm, Mr. Nick, 
What's this pizza? Is it kind of a pea? Like green peas? Hmm. Let's go eat one later, okay? Ah. Uh, I got cut off by the pizza dude at the shop. That's too bad. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> I gave right the, the fucking as you do voice. Um. Let me see. Well. How about we get our minds off this topic and talk about something else, okay, bro? Mr. On Guard. Are you connected to Miss Miss Impact Suicide some way? Huh. I, for one, and this is coming from a <clears throat> New Yorker, may mind you, live and breathe it. I, for one, I like pineapples on pizza. It's delicious. It's amazing. It's sweet, savory. It's amazing. <laughs> fuck me, fuck you. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Listen, I'm a New Yorker. I have the right to love my pineapples on pizza. But that said, I tried a lot of this. <laughs> How do I dislike a stream? <laughs> I have a lot of I have had a lot of a pizza with a lot of a toppings. I even tried sardines before, which actually isn't too bad. It's just very salty. It is so salty. It is so salty. <laughs> it is. But I ate it though. It was alright. Oh here he's like over here in Seattle, we don't do none of that shit. How do I, how do I talk to, um, fucking Andrews? Do I gotta leave and come back? <laughs> I think I gotta leave and come back. Oh shit, what's going on here? Never had it, so you can't tell, can't tell it is. Yeah, for the most part, most people that I talk to this about, when they say no, they never had it. I always ask them, like, have you had it? They're like, no, why would I have it? It, like, why would you put something wet on pizza? And then I look at them, I'm like, you know you cook it into the pizza, right? Also, why would you put something wet on pizza? Dough's kind of wet. Tomato sauce is super wet. I don't, like, what? <laughs> you know, cheese gets wet because the oil comes out. You are intrigued by sardines. You like salty stuff. It's just real. it's, it's not bad. If you eat, if you eat, like, if you're fine eating, um, like, I guess this is more of, like, a Caribbean thing, I guess. But, like, if you ever had, if you ever had, like, swordfish or, like, um... Or like, I guess tilapia with, with like salt on it. It just tastes like that, but it's just like super salty. Oysters and stuff? Are oysters salty? I don't really eat oysters that much, mainly because I'm not cool with the idea of eating something that's still alive. <laughs> Did you know when you're eating mussels and oysters, they're still alive? <laughs> it's pretty fucked up. But, um... Yeah, it's just really, really salty. Like, super strong. Like, cheap canned oysters? No, I mean, like, real oysters. You're supposed to eat them alive. You can't eat them dead. Well, you can eat them dead, but if you eat them while they're dead, then, like, the toxin in their little sack or whatever kind of excretes out. So it's kind of bad to eat them. Eat them if they're already dead. But, like, steam... Steam... Steam clams. Hmm. No. I thought we were having steamed clams. Did I said steamed clams? I meant steamed hams. But yeah, it's just it's just really, really salty. Oh Mr. Wright, please, you have to help me. Oh no. Wait, how the fuck did you get here? What happened? What happened? Why are you here? I you see I got roped into this somehow. What the hell you mean? What? And now I'm gonna I'm now gonna testify at tomorrow's trial. So the decisive witness is Mr. Powers? I was, talk I was talking with the detective until a little while ago, and I was on my way home. When all of a sudden, you there. You are under arrest. I was brought back here. Oh. They, sa they said my face and whole self is general- <laughs> Wow. In general, looks suspicious or something. <laughs> Can't get hungry late at night again? <laughs> I mean, if you really want to talk about hunger right now, like, I last ate around, like, at 6, it's like- it's like what 3:30 for me now, uh, and like I ordered um, order Popeyes, 
So I have like two spicy sandwiches and like a bunch of fries and biscuits just sitting there for me. Oh well, I guess I can see how they how they thought you look suspicious. I'm just a normal guy on an exercise show for kids. Is that a crime? Huh, tomorrow's testimony. It's about this testimony you're given. What are you going to talk about? Uh, I really don't know yet. But it sounds like I saw something pretty important from what they tell me. You saw something important? What was that? Oh, uh, well, the detective told me not to talk about it. You can't tell anyone, and especially not that lawyer, he said. <laughs> you have takeouts now? <laughs> Man, I just really, I just really had like a urge to get like a chicken sandwich, like a crispy chicken sandwich. And I had to order from fucking Uber. I usually order from DoorDash because for some reason Uber fucking puts an extra dollar on the menu for like every item. They think they're slick, but they're not. Who do you think, who do you think that, uh, eh, who do you think this, that lawyer, the detective was talking about? I'm going to take a wild guess and say it's me. Yeah, you got it. Mr. Nick, Mr. Gamaya and, her, Mr. Gamaya and myself are uh, are your only two allies in this whole world, but it's alright. Ouch! I don't really have a lot of friends, do I? Hey, at least Pearl understands it. She's like, you can only trust us. This is gonna do a lot of damage for uh, to Matt, you know. Because he's got that refreshing, like a spring breeze image going. But what is he really like? Well, let's see. That's always been kind of a player with women. He would never really turn a he really uh, never really turn a pretty face away, if you know what I mean. He always say it's just a game to justify himself. What? How horrible! That's unforgiving. Ow! Sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. But you mean, uh, but you know, he said once that there are only there are only one person in the world who won't swoon over me. One person who wouldn't swoon over him. His manager, you know? Miss... Miss Adrian Andrews. Why is Mr. Power suddenly looking kind of energetic? Because... Because how can you not love that woman? She's so beautiful. Ah, oh, you see? I'm actually a sucker for gossip. I mean, celebrities in their world have this dazzling sort of image, right? A dazzling sort of image? But aren't you part of that dazzle, Mr. Powers? No, I'm more of a hairy, sweaty, smelly, brutish kind of guy, you see? But it's okay, really. <laughs> it's okay, really, I'm fine. I'm not, I'm not sad. I get to hear plenty of gossip about a lot of other stars around me, uh, around me as, as things happen. Well, that's true. Oh, hey. So did you hear about this yet? About Miss Andrews' mentor and her suicide? You mean Miss Impacts? Oh, God, something got in my fucking eye. Holy shit. I heard something about her. Uh, about her wedding was cancelled. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought about it a little the other day, about that mysterious death. Hey, Mr. Wright, you don't, uh, eh. Why don't you ask me about that? Go on, go ahead. Mr. Power is so charged up, his skin is practically glowing with electricity. Hmm. Celeste suicide. Hey, so, have you heard this? Celeste left a suicide note. And they said that Juan went and hit it. We heard about that in court today. But there wasn't any actual proof that she had left a note. Well, this is what I think. I think that something bad was written on the note. Something bad for Juan, that is. Something bad for Mr. Cordea? Why do you, why do you figure so? Well, before she died, Celeste talked, a few, uh, talked with a few of her friends. And she said, it looks like I got caught up with a truly ins insidious man. A truly insidious man? Did she mean Mr. Cordea by that? Well, there's no one else that fits the bill, right? And that would be reason enough for him to hide the suicide note. I see. Well, that's something. That's some good info. Thank you. How would, he, how would there be proof of a note if he hit it? Uh, I... I forgot how they came across that. I honestly don't remember. Something it's something that Edgeworth said though. I think he said I think it was something along the lines of like there's a high probability that there's a suicide note and the person who discovered it hit it. Because like her suicide was just there was no reason given for her to have to do the suicide. No one knows why she committed it. So they're assuming 
that there's a note and they tried to look for it, but they couldn't find it. Mr. Engard and Miss Andrews, they both had a detention center. Uh, they're both at the detention center right now. There's still things I don't understand or know about, I'm sure. I have to get to the two of them to tell them everything. Tell them everything? Tell me everything. Tell me everything. I need to know this. I need to talk to, um, to Andrews. Now then, whose story do I want to hear? Bring out the beautiful woman. Oh, it's you. I'm sorry to be visiting at such a late hour. But there are a few questions I absolutely have to ask you tonight. Me? I thought your client was Matt. I'm sure Miss Andrews knows something. She can't be clueless about the secret Mr. Cordain had on Mr. Engard. Talk to me. I'd like to ask you about Matt Engard, if you don't mind. Mr. Wright, you still don't know, do you? The real him, I mean. You seem to bear a lot of resentment towards Mr. Engard. If that's the case, then why did you become his manager? And why would you become intimate with his rival? And that has nothing to do with this case. Nothing. About Miss Celeste's impacts. I had finally put her death behind me. And now, thanks to you, it's all come back to the surface. Don't thank me! Thank Edgeworth! He's the one who went AWOL! Yes, I was shocked by the suicide. And it's true that when I heard the rumor that Juan was the Juan, Juan was the one <laughs> who had hidden her suicide note, I began to draw clo I began to draw close to him. And I wanted to get her suicide note back and burn it. You wanted to burn it, but why? But why? Why would you want to burn it? I didn't want to. I didn't want to spread. Oh uh, wow! I didn't want it to spread just like another piece of gossip. But I never held any murderous intent towards Juan. I would never do something so stupid. Suicide, no. Huh? I would never do something so stupid. Says the person who tried to commit suicide. <laughs> why did you try to frame Mr. Ungard? That's simple. Because he's the killer. That's why. Isn't it the duty of every good citizen to inform the police? But there had to be another way. The police are ex uh, police are excellent at doing their job, so they figured it out, right? Yes, they're so good that they couldn't figure out the real truth behind Celeste's death. Miss Andrews. Well, I know you're not the type of person to do something without a reason. So please, tell me why did you do it? Well, why? Revenge. Huh? Did you say something just now? What's with you people in hiding seat? You just have one lock. Huh. Man, you must have like a really weak fortitude then. <laughs> Do you understand yet? You're not my lawyer. To be honest, you're more like my enemy. But... I'm sure I just heard Miss Andrews say... Revenge. Huh. <laughs> Damn, you came for her. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm just- I'm just an innocent lawyer, dude. What would dictate revenge here? I don't think- I don't think the suicide report would help me, though. I feel like I'm still missing evidence. I'm gonna head- I'm gonna head to some- I'm gonna check some other areas first. Oh. My phone's going off. Mr. Nick, your phone. Hey! That's the Seal Samurai theme song, isn't it? Shut up, Powers. I don't like the sound of this ringtone right now. It sounds kind of ominous. Yeah, I know. Hello, Mr. Killer? Oh, it's Gumshoe. We're in trouble now, pal. Oh, I'll be back at the office real soon. What? What's wrong? Something really unexpected happened. Mr. Edgeworth, he... He was shot! Edgeworth? Anyways, hurry up and get back to the office, pal. I don't know what's going on anymore. It's no good. The end, I... What happened? Hello? He got cut off. What? What's going on? Why is people getting offed? <laughs> Gumshoe said he, we needed to go back to the office right now. Then we should hurry back. I'm scared to go back. What are you talking about, Mr. Nick? Pull yourself together. Uh, yet another moment of Pearl Patina at work. Going, do it. Do it. 
Maybe it'll be good news. Somehow, I doubt that. Can you come with me, Powers? I mean, they don't have you locked up here, do they? <laughs> Can use a guy of your stature. Do it. <laughs> it's my favorite. Kill him. What took you so long, pal? Mr. Ezra could stick around forever. I uh, couldn't stick around forever. I had to go. Well, what happened? We got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. We know who bought the spy camera. Okay, then what's the bad news? That's quick. And this bear, what gave... Uh, the bear's what gave him away, pal. The bear. I figured it out, pal. I figured out uh, what we should have been looking for in the bear instead of the camera. Hmm. But wasn't it Mr. Edgeworth that figured it out? Shh, Pearl, shut up. And go on. There's only one person who bought one of those bears who related to this crime. Who is it? Who would be so rude as to spy on another person in their room? Matt Ungard. Yeah? Huh? Matt Ungard, your client. Matt's who, pal. And here I thought things couldn't get any worse. Damn it. Are you sure you heard that right? That the person who bought this bear was... I heard it from the department store clerk, pal. This is the credit card received for the purchase. It's for... Oh my god. 8300 pal. That's an exact match to the price on the stuffed bear. Receipt? That's all you have? Nah, it's not just the receipt, pal. Store clerk said, uh, store clerk? <laughs> Cluck? What the hell? He's a chicken now. The store clerk said I'm sorry. <laughs> He's, what was the dude from Toy Story 2? Big Al? He's dressed up as a chicken? Come down to Big Al's toy shop. He told me, I'm sure I sold the bear to Matt Ingard, Mr. Ingard. I mean, the clerk even got Mr. Ingard's autograph out of it, pal. So I'm pretty sure the person that bought the stuffed bear was Mr. Ingard himself. My... The sight is failing me. This can't be. I'm going blind! So, what about the spy camera we found? Ah, eh, that was a dead end, pal. I mean, you can get this kind of thing from anywhere. But for now, I guess I can give these back to you. Uh, I give this back to you for your file. Thank you. Well, you gave me the camera, but not the transceiver. I know you don't want to give up, pal. I never thought I didn't think it was possible. The person who put the spy camera in Juan Cordea's room was Matt Engard. Why would Mr. Engard do something like this? I bet it was to cat uh, catch Miss Andrews and Mr. Cordea in one of their rendezvous. I bet it's not good enough for me. I have to find, I have to know the absolute truth behind this camera. Are you gonna see him, Mr. Engard? I mean, yes. I'm scared, Nick. I wonder. I wonder what we'll find out next. I'm scared myself. But I have to put on a good face for pearls. Matt Engard. What in the world have you done? Damn. Damn. Remember what I said? I. At some. I still don't think he did it, to be honest. I really still don't think he did it. But I did say at some point, our client's just going to be straight up guilty. <laughs> and this is coming pretty close. You're working really late, you know? It's already past 10 p.m., dude. I think it's time you told me the truth. Relax. Don't you know what ignorance is bliss? But you, you really want to know? Let's talk. I guess. <laughs> All right. All right, Matt. Don't bullshit me. Now, let's hear the secret of yours. What if Mr. Cordea had been successful in his plans? What would have been disclosed? I told you before, dude. I don't know. I don't know anything about Juan, okay? Look, Mr. Wright. 
I can keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face, but I totally didn't pay Juan any attention the whole time that night. I mean, come on. I was in the middle of a nap. Don't lie to me. Huh? I know you I know you paid close attention to Mr. Juan especially that night. Is the is the receipt part of the evidence now? Receipt. Okay. Yeah. Check it. Someone used his camera to secretly film Mr. Cordeo's room the night of the murder. Secretly film? What? And then sent the image the camera took with this transmitter. Wow. But dude, where where was the camera? You're like, you're talking about hidden. It was bear. The spy camera was hidden in a bear's eye. A, a bear? A bear that was supposed to be a present from a fan. Hmm. I guess Juan had a few of those kind of fans too, huh, dude? Actually, I wouldn't say this bear was a present from a fan. Hmm. You sure, dude? Who else could it be from? The person who gave this bear? Well, it's you. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to show the receipt or not, but... The receipt doesn't... <sighs> I'll I'll show the receipt just to be safe. Nope, it, I guess I have to show him. Yep. I'm dead. If you push yourself. Yeah, I guess I gotta I gotta show him himself. I mean, even though the receipt does have his name on it. All right, this is camera. There's a bear. All right, it was you, you did it. Mr. Engard, do you know this bear from somewhere? I don't think I ever met Mr. Bear dude before. Aw. But he has, but he says he knows you. He could forget such a great friend. What else did the bear tell you? He says that the one who put the camera in his eyes was you, Mr. Engard. If I didn't know how, if I didn't know how you work in court, I think I was some serious trouble. Come on, it's all a joke, right, dude? You're just yanking my chain, bro. You're just joshing me. You're just pulling my leg. Look, like you're not ready to give up your... <laughs> Look, like you're... Eh. Looks like you're not ready to give up your secret just yet. Well, do you have any proof you want to show me first? Here's proof that it was you who put the camera inside the bear. Then it's the receipt. I have here one credit card receipt from Engard. It's from when you bought the stuffed bear. Dude... All you can tell from this is that I spent... I had like a hiccup, oh my god. I spent like 3800 bro. I go to the department store all the time. This 3800 it could be the toothbrush I brought that one time. A $3,800 toothbrush? It's ivory, and it's got elephant hair for bristles. That doesn't... that doesn't sound pleasant. Ew, elephant hair. It's what, it's, what rich, it's what rich people use nowadays. Anyways, the store clerk certainly rem uh, remem uh, rem uh, remembers you in here. <laughs> I couldn't say the word remember. <laughs> After all, you even gave him an autograph, did you not? Dude, you shouldn't have said that earlier. Hmm. So I can ask you one thing. Yes? You're my lawyer, right, dude? So, if you are, then why are you looking into stuff like that? Because you don't know the truth, I can't help you. Sounds more like a stupid lawyer talk to me. Hey, let's stop talking about this, okay? No, not yet. I haven't asked you why this camera was set up yet. And your sec and what your secret is, of course, it would be strictly confidential. So, what are you gonna do now? I'm gonna find out what I wanna know, because I must. 
The reason you hit this camera in Mr. Cordeo's room and filmed it in secret is... I'm gonna... I'm gonna use the tabloid... article. I'm gonna use the tabloid article for this. Ah, oh, fuck. Again, I was about to say, <laughs> poor elephant. <laughs> I was about to say Andre again, goddamn. Uh, Adrian Andrews? There's a rumor going around that Miss Andrews and Mr. Cordea was having a secret meeting. You, who was keeping tabs on Mr. Cordea, you were going to reveal this as fact and turn it into a scandal. Is that right? Dude, you'd be such a moron. Huh? Oh man, Mr. Lawyer, dude. That kind of scandal? That's the good stuff. That's what we in the industry call juicy. It's delicious. The good stuff. Juicy. Look, we can get we can get publicity without spending a penny with that kind of stuff. I mean, if people stop paying attention to us, then it'll be the end, right, dude? Too bad that wasn't your intention. What are you talking about? I wish a reason for spying on someone so innocent. Uh, what I wished, eh. What's the reason for spying on something so innocent? I wish it was, eh, whatever, fuck. Can't read. But then spy on Mr. Cordea because Miss Andrews. And there's only one reason I can think of. Hmm? The real reason you set up the camera in Mr. Cordea's room was... Uh... <laughs> the, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, I, to be honest... In my mind, the only way I'm thinking about this is that because he was trying to get with, with, uh, he couldn't get with, um, whatchamacallit, with Andrews. What, what would the reason be, actually? I don't think it's in my, the real reason you set up the camera in Mr. Cordero's room was, uh, huh. Get your card. Knife. Tipped to suicide, suicide report. Wine glass, guitar case, hotel guide map, magazine clipping, lotto, radio, conference ticket. For some reason, I feel like it's the conference ticket. Oh, it sucks that I have one pip of help. Help? One pip of health. Can't read. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of felt that one. I instantly forgot what I was doing. <laughs> All right. Good thing that it doesn't actually kill me. It just lowers my health, which sucks. So I can try as many times as I want. And no one can stop me. All right. So the first one is the camera. Why am I going the long way about doing things? I could have just pressed back or whatever. Talking about where it was hitting. It was hitting the bear. All right. Person who gave it to it is you. And proof is the receipt. All right. Let me see. This is where I left off, right? Let me see. Da da. Elephant bristles because you're fucking nasty. Alright, ask you one thing, yes. You're a lawyer, why are you looking at stuff like this? Because it's my job. Sounds more stupid. No, not yet. I haven't asked you why you set up the camera yet. What's your secret, of course? Confidential. So you want to know? I'm going to find out, because I must. The reason you hit this camera... I... Huh. I just want to... I think I just want to hand the press conference ticket, but I don't, I don't think that's the, the reason. I don't think that's the reason, because he said he didn't know about it. Huh. Eh, well, I can't go wrong. I just try. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I expected that. Dude, how about you take that bear home with you and talk to it? Sure, Mr. Bear will talk with you. Oh, damn it. 
You didn't have to, you didn't have to crush my soul like that. It made me feel bad about myself. The real reason. I mean, he could use it to spy on Cordea, right? I mean. But is just selecting, would selecting Cordea just do that? Would that count? Am I missing evidence? I think I might be missing evidence, actually. You know what? Fuck this! <laughs> I feel like I'm missing evidence. I think I'm just... I have to be missing evidence. Hold on, let me, let me run around and check some things. Uh, let's see. I don't think Old Bags has anything for me. Just make sure no one's, like, hiding around anywhere. <laughs> Living room. I don't think there's anything in here for me at all. Oh, but there is, though! Okay. Looks like no one's around. Hmm, what happened to the person with the stuffed teddy bear face? Oh, she must mean that butler with the stitches on his face. Shoo! Oh, there you are. I guess you're still awake, huh, Shu? Come on, let's play. I wonder if the butler, Mr. Doe, is really asleep or not. Oh, so I guess there is nothing here for me. There's a small door back there. Yeah, we checked it already. Just want to look around. This giant cooking hearth? Hearth? Come visit May, uh, Fanner, uh, Faye Manor, and I'll show you. Okay. Well, that's nice. Thanks. Thanks, Pearl. What about this? Oh, a giant bicycle flying through the air. It's a bicycle. Pearl, no one, uh, eh. Pearl's is one where you, where you, eh, I can't fucking read. That bicycle. Pearl's is one where you don't have to pedal to move it. Really? Wow. I'm sorry to disappoint you. It can't fly. Well, that's too bad. Anything under the couch cushions? Very comfortable. In any case, I don't really belong here. Oh. What's with me feeling inferior today? Isn't that every day? I do have all the evidence? Okay. Just want to make sure. Just wanted to make sure. How the fuck are we going into criminal affairs? Because I'm not sure if I have to, like, actually go talk to Adrian first. Alright, well then I'm just fucking stupid. <laughs> the real... the real reason? What would the real reason be? Like... Like, a part of me wants to, like, choose this because it's like you're waiting for the hit to be carried out. But fucking... I don't... <laughs> I don't think that's it. Let me see. Change for the take my spy camera, radio waves, and transmit the data. Huh. Like, in my mind, I feel like if I throw him, if I hit him with the Hitman rap, he'll just be like, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. You're full of shit. But I guess I can try it. I mean, it'll be pretty. It'll be pretty easy for someone to be like, "You ordered a hit," and for you to just go like, "Nah, you're, nah, that's bullshit." I'm moving on with my life. Person gave him the bear. Where's you? Your bears. All right, proof that you put it inside. There you go. I guess I can try the card. There's no harm in trying that out. 
The real reason. Ha! Huh. Okay. What's this card? Maybe he doesn't know about this card. See, that's what I was afraid of. <laughs> this is a certain man's calling card. The man's name is Shelly the Killer. And I'm sure you know I'm sure you know of him, don't you? Shelly the Killer. You know what? I instantly forgot, now that I think about it, the moment we came in here to it was dude, you can't blame me. It was like two days ago. <laughs> it was like two days ago. The moment we came in here, we said, oh, we got a message from the killer to be your lawyer or whatever. He just went like, the killer? Oh, shit. Huh, why would I know someone, some shady scumbag like him? If you really don't know him, then why are you acting so jumpy all of a sudden? Huh? That's it. I finally started to get to the truth. I can't afford to make any more mistakes now. Mr. Ungard, I know why you, uh, why Mr. The Killer, because... You're a hero of justice. You're his client. You're a star. You're gonna be a star, baby. I promise you. Since you're the one who set up the camera, that means you knew you knew exactly what was gonna happen in that room. So, how would you know something like that? It's because you're his client. That's why. You hired Shelly the Killer to assassinate Mr. Juan Cordea. The real mastermind behind this whole murder is you. Matt Ungard. Huh. And here I was, trying to be a good boy for you, dude. Huh? I thought you didn't know you'd be able to do your job without feeling bad. Well, that's what I thought anyways. Mr. Ungard, you really did hire? Hold on a sec. I'm gonna consult myself, okay? Hey, yeah? The killer, this is me. Uh, you can kill Maya now. Consult myself? Well, I guess it's probably about time anyways. About time for what? I think it's time for you to meet him now, my lawyer, dude. What the fuck? You thought, you thought it was me, Matt, but instead it was I, Dio. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> how does how did no one ever notice that? Do you, how do you, Mr. Lawyer? What? Oh my God! How did no one notice this? This giant wine glass out of nowhere, dude! I'm defending a guilty man. I called it. But I really, I really did feel like, I, I honestly really did feel like he didn't do it though. But I just felt, I felt at some point, at some point, someone's gonna be guilty. Damn. Why'd it have to be you, dude, bro? Well done, Mr. Wright. I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much information as you have. You really? So you are Shelly the Killer's client. You didn't really think I would dirty my own hands this time, did you? What? What do you mean? And that woman, Adrian, was quite brave. Was quite brave herself. Tried to stick the crime on me, but I didn't think she had it in her. But all I care about is that Juan is dead. Isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? <laughs> you caught that shit so early. <laughs> oh my God, I did. That. You're lying. It was past your bedtime, little girl. It's way past your bedtime, little girl. Go on, and let us grown-ups talk about more adult things. But why? Why did you hide the video camera in? A weakling soon believes the words of others, just like that particular Adrian. He knew about Miss Andrew's secret? But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone, least of all, assassins. What? Oh, come now, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. They turn their clients into cash cows by holding the sinful deed over their heads. And a star is like a superstar like me. How much do you think I'm worth? Care to guess? And... And that's why... Yes. That's where the video comes in. 
I've got his face and the crime scene recorded on it. Preserved for all time. With that, I can keep him at bay and even blackmail him if I wanted. That's right, the video is my insurance. Since that, uh, since that what they call, wait, isn't that what they call it, Mr. Wright? Why would you do something so wrong? Because I'm a grown man and I can do whatever the fuck I want. Good enough for an answer for you, little girl? Why, why are you, why would you kill Mr. Cordea? Because he was about to sling so much dung onto my beautiful, perfect image. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? This is all because of that press conference, isn't it? If Mr. Cordea had been able to give it, then Mr. Engard's secret would have... Ah, well. That's what we call taking advantage of the situation, you know. I had no interest in doing it, really. But bit by bit, it crept upon me. And then the situation just presented itself perfectly. How beautiful. How beautiful, I thought. And that, that's how Mr. Cordea ended up dead. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. People are simply things to be used, used and thrown away. But on a sweet, innocent face. And people will swallow anything you feed them. Adrian fell for it. The assassin too. And how can I forget? Even you fell for it, Mr. Lawyer. Everyone all working their butts off for me. Matt Ungard. Ah, didn't that leave you speechless? What a shame. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? You've grown awfully quiet. How could you have been so deceived? How can I have been so deceived by you all this time? When we first met, I asked you, I asked you had you kill Juan Cordea, and you answered very clearly that you had to kill anyone. Hey now, I never told you any lies. The person who died, the, the person who did the killing was the killer guy, right? All I'm guilty of is taking the cat catnap in my room. You, you killed Mr. Cordea. <laughs> I dare you to say that in court tomorrow. Ah, oh, but too bad. You can't, you can't. You're my lawyer after all, aren't you? You can always drop my case and refuse to represent me. How does that sound? Oh, but you can't, can you? That, that, would, be, uh, that would be the one thing you absolutely cannot do. Mystic Maya. You wouldn't want to test a killer. He's a man of his word, so I've heard. You could end up getting a certain friend of yours uh, robbed, robbed, uh, rubbed out if you lose. You see, you, you scoundrel. So if I were you, Mr. Wright, uh, Mr. Wire, uh, Mr. Wright, Esquire, Esquire. What? <laughs> why, why would you say that? I think it would have given. I think it would give my all tomorrow. I'm done with the voice. Remember, everyone likes a happy win-win of -win, uh, eh, whatever. Dance Dance Revolution. I'll get you for this. That's such a cliche. Uh, ch uh, can't can't read. It's a cliche phrase. Too cliche. Juan said something just like that, if memory serves. Of course. Well, we all know how how well things turned out for him, don't we? Good night, Mr. Lawyer. Uh, Maya, what am I supposed to do? And now, he finally found it. The starting line of this case. Edgeworth. I don't care for the horrid atmosphere here. Uh, let's return to the precinct. Damn, Miles. Well, right? What are you gonna do? If you plan on changing your strategy. No. You can't do that. That's right. He's holding my hostage. What? What should I do? It's not something I can answer for you. Mr. Edgeworth, but you're so perfect. You're supposed to have all the answers. Right. Only you can decide where to go from here. One year ago, at that time, I didn't truly understand what a prosecutor was. 
and that's why I had to leave the prosecution office. I felt that I couldn't stand in court of law until I knew what a, prosecu a prosecutor really was. And now, right, it's your turn. My turn? What is this thing called a lawyer? What can you, what can you do as one? You must find the answer, and you must find it on your own. Damn it. I'm a lawyer, but to fight for someone who's clearly a killer? Matt Engard. That man's really... It doesn't matter who. Every person deserves a proper defense and a fair trial. Isn't that the basis of our just... Of our ju uh, ju just, uh, Can't say the word judicial. It, my mouth won't do it. Ju uh, whatever. Proper defense? But what exactly is that? Is it, uh, is, it, uh, is it where a lawyer for, uh, forcibly and blindly gets an acquittal through shouting and trickery? Ironic that you of all people should say such a thing. Isn't that exactly how you fought, uh, your, uh, fought for your clients up till now? Ugh. Well, that may be true, but that's, that's because I believe my clients to be innocent from the bottom of my heart. But if I weren't to get Ungard an acquittal, if I, weren't, if I were to get Ungard an acquittal, then that isn't a proper defense at all. I became a lawyer because I thought I thought I could save people who were suffering in pain. But when I look at this mess we're in, I can't even protect the person closest to me. Even if I win the case, I still lose in the end. I just don't know what to do. Right. Would you get a hold of yourself? You have it all wrong. Huh? We aren't some sort of heroes. We're only human. I'm only human. After all, don't put the blame on me. You and I, we want to save someone. That's something easier said than done, wouldn't you say? That's... You're a defense attorney. You can't run away from that. You can only fight. That's all you can do. People like you and Francesca Von Karma are always using all you have to depend on me. You fight to the very end, even when you know the truth is not, is not with you. But I'm not like you. I can't fight for a false verdict, for a man I clearly know to be guilty. Francesca, she fights for herself. The first thing that she fights for is her perfect win record, that's all. And, isn't that the same as you? Isn't that why you ran away a year ago? Because your precious win record was destroyed? You're so petty. I see. Now I understand why you despise me so. However, you're mistaken. What are you? Thanks to you, when you sealed off my path to a perfect record, I began to realize the error of my ways. I realized that things such as a perfect record were meaningless. What? I don't believe you. Are you saying that is why you love? Saying that's why you left the pr prosecution office? Fucking ouch, Phoenix. <laughs> but then, why are you here now? The answer to that is something you'll you'll find out on your own. I have faith that you'll see it before the verdict is read tomorrow. But if you can't, then you will be powerless to change the ending of the story. Alright, fucking Orin. Coming straight out of Final Fantasy X. This is my story. You're not a part of it. I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Now then, Mr. Attorney, do you wager you can obtain an acquittal tomorrow? My, my. What's the matter, Mr. Attorney? I don't sense your usual anger this time. Tell me, please. Why are you holding Maya hostage for Mr. Engard's sake? Why are you... Why are you doing this for the cold-blooded killer? Right. Please don't misunderstand things. He's my client. Don't toy with me! The man who hires an assassin is just as much of a killer himself. I believe you were asking me for a reason as to why I'm doing this. Yeah? This is what I like to call my aftercare. What the heck is after? Yeah, what the fuck is aftercare? My name carries a certain amount of honor and dignity, Mr. Attorney. I think, I think, uh, I think great care to, I take great, uh, <laughs> can't read. I take great care to ensure that no suspicion falls upon my clients for my handiwork. That is why it's called client relations. <clears throat> and is part of an assassin's duty. An assassin's duty. We were unlucky this time and my client was arrested as a suspect. As a result, I did what I had to do to enlist your expert help, Mr. Attorney. 
and to ensure that you would do everything in your power to, to the very end. What is your name? I believe I told you once before, however, you did, but... Bro, do you want to become famous with more followers, dude? You should head to bigfollows.com. <laughs> like, what the hell? Oh my god, there's like three of them? I didn't even, four of them? I didn't even notice. I need, I need a fucking, I need a, like a, I need a goddamn spam bot protection, some shit. I gotta find out how to do that. My name is The Killer. Shelly The Killer. Is your Shelly The Killer? Please, keep in mind that you do not have much space to maneuver with me. As a killer, I always finish what I set out to do. If you fail to keep up your end of the bargain, Maya, it would be my duty as an assassin to see to see uh, that she receives a nice long nap. Damn, you really are gonna kill her. Now then, if you'll excuse me, if someone were to trace the signal back to me, it would be quite troublesome. Damn it. What? What? Somebody, somebody take me to that fucking mansion right now. I don't know what to say. Edgeworth. Hmm? Did you hear that? At the end of the transmission? Huh? All that? Sound like a cat. A cat? It can't be that cat, can it? What is it? I think I know where Shelly the killer is holding my hostage. Edgeworth. I have all the police units head to the end guard mansion immediately. Alright. You hurry over there as well then. Don't lose hope yet, Pearls. The fight has just uh, the fight has only just begun. I called it! Fucking give me that goddamn give me that fucking manner. There's a bear in front of it. Oh shit. Maya! Please answer us, Mystic Maya! We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. Assuming he's still in the area. I can't believe it. That butler, all this time. He was the killer. He and Engar were working together all this time. I'm sure they had I'm sure they had worked out a contingency plan ahead of their time. Give me this fucking door. Open a shit. There's a small door at the bottom of the bigger door, Mr. Nick. But it's for the cat to use. Oh, you mean shoe? It's a fucking bear. Oh, it's a, f it's a figurine of a bear. But there's a lot of cuts in it for some reason. It's a wooden carving? Really? A bear? Is that more of a thing for Mr. Cordea? Why would someone like- why would something like this be here? Right, look down, there's a little pet door installed there. I'm sure that's for Shu. Do you think that this came through the little door? Hmm. This door. It's locked. Well, I'm pretty used to breaking down doors by now. Let's go, Edgeworth! BAM! There's no one here? From the looks of this room, I would say that Engard's private lounge. Look at this, right? An antenna for sending and, a, for sending and receiving signals through, via VCR. Check inside the deck, then there's a tape. It'd be an important piece of evidence. If, uh, if, if we're lucky, you know, the moment the crime was committed. I'm sorry, but the tape deck is empty. There's no tape to be found. Man, they they fucking skedaddle. Edgeworth took the door down. They both took the door down. Oh man, they both got out. But there's no mistake that someone used to or used it to record something. Looks like someone took the tape we're, we're looking for and escaped with it. All that matters is that did they take Maya? He searched all over, but it looks like he got away. I'm sorry. Looks like he slipped out of our grasp this time. And now we've lost our only lead. Don't give up yet. That little girl is just looking is looking for you to uh da, 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 da. Don't give up yet. That little girl is looking to you to be her pillar. Uh, damn it, I can't read. Yeah, you're right. We're close, I can tell. We've already set up a checkpoint along uh along every route. Leading to this district. Leave the rest to us. Give me that. Give me that. This looks like a picture of Miss Impacts. With love, Celeste. So there was an affair. Huh. Yes, Mr. Cordea's former manager. 
Why would a picture of Miss Impacts be here in Engard's mansion? And why does it say with love? Might be a clue. Ah! What's wrong, Pearls? Please, let me see that picture frame. What's so special about the frame? On the back, there's something written on the back of the frame. Maya. It's Mystic Maya. She left us a message. What? I thought you'd come. I knew you would. Now listen up. You better get Engard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime, slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you ever. I'm fine, so don't need to worry. There's so much I want to write, but I don't think I have a lot of time left. Curly, you there too, right? Make sure you help Nick, okay? Someone's got to watch out for him, uh, for this helpless luck. Lunk? Luck? Ugh. Um, that's it for now. I guess I'll talk to you guys later. That's... No! Mystic Maya! Right? What's wrong? Why the blank stare? Oh, um, nothing. We searched the house and still- and this is the last room. Looks like he eluded us. Edgeworth. Yes. As far as clues goes, I think this is about all I'm gonna get. But I'm still short on one last thing. And what is that? You're damn right. Miss Andrew's psychic lock. If I can just find out what secret she holds, then I think I stand a chance in court tomorrow. To blow this case wide open and expose the truth. I think I know what you're thinking about. I'll contact I'll contact the detention center. Thanks, Edgeworth. Well, let's go, Pearls. It's time to open the last lock. Good evening, Mr. Wright. What's wrong? You look ill. Miss Andrews, I have come to remove your psychic lock. My what now? I want to know. <laughs> Just look at her like, I've come to remove your psychic lock. She's like, my what? <laughs> I wanted to know. I wanted to know and you, uh, I want to know and you will tell me. Your secret. Fine, go ahead. Try to break me if you can. Why am I, why am I going to talk? Present. Tell me all your secrets. Alright. Why frame him? Can you please tell me why you frame Mr. Engard, the murderer? I've already told you countless times it's because I thought Matt was the killer. No, that's not it. I know you have a personal reason just like Mr. Engard. Miss Andrews, you may think I didn't hear it, but I know you said something earlier. You said revenge. So you're saying that I was taught taking revenge out on on Matt, and that's why? What an absurd idea. I don't have anything I... <clears throat> I don't... Eh, I don't have anything I don't want to take revenge for. I, I want to take revenge. I can't read. Kill me now. Miss Andrews, a woman who lives by being dependent on other people. There's something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. Something or someone... Are you kidding me? Are we really doing this? Is that what we're doing? Come on. Something. See, there's some. There's something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. Ah, oh, pain in the ass. You really are. Like the photo has her name on it. Like, come on. It's less. There's only one catalyst that could cause such a strong feeling and for even revenge. And it's that Miss Impact suicide. What are you talking about? Celeste was Juan's manager. On top of that, the one who hit her suicide note was also Juan. What does all this have to do with Matt? You're right. You haven't mentioned him yet. But for you to hate Mr. Engard, it would mean that he must have had someone, uh, some relations to Miss Impact and her suicide. Can you explain to me the relation between them? Then is the picture. There you go. There you go. This is the photo of Miss Impax, correct? She looked younger than when she passed away, though. What? With love, Celeste. This is Miss Impax's handwriting, isn't it? Where did you find this? 
No. That's all right. It was a it was a rhetorical question. That's how you spell rhetorical, really? God damn. It's a fucked up word. Yeah. It is. I found this at Mr. Engard's mansion. And after all this time, my last remaining secret has been revealed. But why? Why would you lie to me? You're so beautiful. Why frame him? Celeste, she was supposed to she's supposed to get married to Juan. Yes, but I heard that it didn't work out. Because Mr. Cordea didn't want didn't want to Because uh, Mr. Cordea didn't want to get married to her anymore, right? Yes. Because of Matt. Because of Mr. Engard. What do you mean? I think I can see where this is going. Celeste. She was Matt's manager a long time ago. She was the happiest woman in the world at the time. I was working part-time back then. I often saw the two of them together. So that's why, with love, Celeste is written on the frame of the picture. They were a couple, weren't they? It wasn't anything as split as, it, as that. Celeste was being used. Toyed with until she was thrown away. That's so horrible. Matt's entire image is built around how nice and wonderful of a man he is. The scandal would have destroyed that. Which is why Celeste, in her kindness, moved over to the to the uh, Worldwide Studios. And that's where she met Juan. She seemed really happy with him. Even happier than when she was with Matt. Celeste and Juan were such a good match that they were even planning to get married. And then, it suddenly called off. On the night that Juan called their marriage off, Celeste, she killed herself. And that's why I framed Matt. It was revenge for Celeste and for myself. I'm sure even you can guess why Juan called the wedding off, right? Matt confessed to Juan about his relationship with Celeste. I see. So that's what happened. But, then why did Mr. Cordea have to call off the wedding? I don't understand at all. It was probably because of his worthless male pride. Juan and Matt were always fierce rivals. Matt waited for the wedding announcement, and then unleashed the truth on Juan. He was aiming for when it would hurt Juan the most. Or miss impacts. That wasn't the end of it. That day, I'm almost certain that Celeste left a suicide note behind. And in that note, she left a detailed account of Matt's various misdeeds, and... So that's... So that she would never again be hurt by... Uh, so that she would never again be hurt by Matt. She chose to die. Then when Juan discovered her body, he hit her note. Why did I... Ugh, I, could, I had like a lisp there. But why would he do that? It's simple. Juan realized the note was a powerful weapon against Matt. And it would be especially damaging if his refreshing like a spring breeze image. In any case. With his pride hurt, Juan sought revenge. Revenge. <sighs> There's that word again. Juan wanted to publicly disclose the contents of the suicide note. At a time that it would cause Matt the most damage, of course. And that was... That was the press conference after the stage show. I know all about it because I heard it from Juan. It was so I could, so I could find out about all... <clears throat> it was so I can find out about all this that I drew close to Juan and began, uh, to begin with. They're quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? Even Celeste's death was something for them to use in their game. That night, when I found Juan's body, it was only natural that I thought the murderer was Matt. Those two were always spying on one another, after all. As for me, I was frantically searching for Celeste's suicide note. I wanted to destroy it before it ever went public. I was going to burn it. I had even brought a lighter. But, I couldn't find the suicide note. And that's when revenge crossed my mind. 
Yes. I was gonna bring the I was going to bring them my own kind of cruel revenge. Celeste was killed by those two monsters. So when I stabbed Juan's body with the knife, I didn't feel a single shred of guilt. And that's all I have to say. Man, Andrews, you're so hot. So psychotic, I love you. Well, Mr. Wright, even knowing all this, are you still going to help that man? I... I'm a lawyer. I see. What a foul profession. Thank you very much for your time and for talking with me. It was no big deal. I couldn't sleep anyways. I can't sleep either. Not with my situation or what I know now. Damn. What the hell? Why is everyone in showbiz so murderous? Go with you people. Why are you all psychotic murderers? What the hell? How did, how did it come to this mess? That's far enough! You can't run forever. Mr. Phoenix Wright! What? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. Huh? <gasps> but I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title. Damn, the same dream again. I had this dream before, someplace, some time ago. As if this day was written into my destiny. Today, I'll stand in court as a lawyer. To, a, to prove a killer innocent. Uh, this is... This is gonna be a pain in the ass. Hello, this is Phoenix Wright. You don't look so well, dude. You're gonna prove you're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? <laughs> if you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it is not just me. Your precious friend's life is riding on t today's verdict too. Now listen up. You better get Engar a guilty sentence, okay? If you get the creepy slime bag not guilty, I'll never forgive you, ever. Maya. Phoenix? Phoenix! Mia! Maya, how's Maya? I don't know. You don't know? She hadn't tried to channel me since yesterday. Mia, what am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer, the worst of times is when you have to force your biggest smiles. But you can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please. There's nothing left. Not here, not anywhere. I'm really liking this ringtone to this phone. Alright, so the cursed end guard again. Will you leave me alone? Look, don't call me anymore, I mean it. You really mean, pal? Ah, uh, come shoo. I'm really sorry, man. Where are you? They let me join the investigation team and were chasing after the killer, pal. Huh? Then you have some sort of lead? Sorry, but right now we've got zero leads on the guy. But we're not gonna give up. Come shoo. Until the trial's over, until the verdict is handed down, we're going to do everything we can to find a killer. If we can get Maya out, then you can get Engard the guilty verdict he deserves, pal. That's true. I could do that if they find Maya first. You got that? So you have to do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. I have to make the trial last longer? 
If you go to if you go uh, if you go at Mr. Edgeworth with everything you got, then you two can draw it out. Oh, now I get it. I believe in you, pal. You and Mr. Engard can do it. So, believe in us. We're gonna give it all. We're gonna give it our all. Uh, eh. we're gonna we're going to give it all we got, just like you. For some reason, I couldn't read it. Got it. Thanks, Gumshoe. Hey, Phoenix. You understand now, don't you? You have some. You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. It's the strongest weapon in the world, and you have it in abundance. Yeah, you're right. I guess. Kind of weird friendship I got. Looks like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through, I know. Alright. Here we go. Time to protect the guilty man. This is gonna be a pain in the ass. Alright, court is now in session for the trial of Matt Engar. Let's make sure we save beforehand, because I don't want to do all that shit all over again. Alright. <clears throat> How long has the stream been going? For like two hours? Three hours? Court is now in session for the trial of Matt Engard. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Alright. That was unnecessary, Edgeworth. What the hell was that about? Now, as I call, we concluded yesterday's session with a big mystery on our hands. The mystery being what exactly was Miss, uh, was Miss Andrews' role in this murder. This is to say that she really connected to the crime itself. Master, uh, Mr. Engard, Engard, Mr. Edgeworth, if you would please inform the court of today's proceedings. Adrian Andrews, she forged evidence that threw suspicion onto Mr. Engard, and then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing a nickel samurai costume. The guilt of these actions were those from which she could not escape. <clears throat> hmm, then you're saying that she is guilty after all. I'm not finished, Your Honor. Miss Andrews has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the court's attention to this card. What is that? Looks like a shell. This is the calling card for a certain assassin. Assassin, you say? Yes, Juan Cordea was killed by a professional assassin. And the police who hired the assassin, his client, so to speak, is Matt Engard. What a, surprise, what a surprising turn of events. I would think it would become commonplace by now, Your Honor. I know what's going on this time, so I know that everything Edgeworth has said is true, but we still have to hold out as long as we can, at least until my is safe, safe and sound. I wonder how the trial will turn out today. Me too! Now then, please call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. Prosecutor called the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers, to the stand. You meant her to kill her? Now then, witness, your name and occupation, please. Uh, okay. I am, uh, Will Powers. I'm a poor, underpaid action star. What is your relation to the defendant? Well, that's, I guess I'm sort of a lousy mentor to him in a way. Mr. Powers, please. You did not need to put yourself down so much. Oh, sorry. Well, but I'm just, I'm just kind of a nothing sort of guy. On the night of the murder, you visit the defendant's room. This is correct? Yes. I... I didn't know that. Um, but you know, I didn't actually get to see Matt when I went. All you need to do is answer what you're asked. Now then, I would like you to please testify about when you went to Mr. Engard's room. Okay, sure. Let's see. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of in front of his room, still his nickel, uh, still in his nickel samurai costume. He was talking with someone at first. I thought it was the bellboy. I watched two of them for a while, but then I gave then I gave up and went back. I guess with me at the, I guess with me that night, I could have made them. Oh God, I can't fucking read. <laughs> I I had guests with me that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. Hmm. Nothing sounds out of place in Mr. Powers' testimony. And talking with the bellboy is no big deal. If one assumes that the person uh, that the person Mr. Engar was speaking with was an ordinary bellboy, 
What are you implying? Well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? Looks like we're in another sticky situation. Huh? A trap. Can't you smell it, Phoenix? But for us to find out more, we're just gonna have to charge charge and head first, right? God damn it. Okay. After the war ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. The defendant's room. Why'd you go there? Well, I miss Minter, like a big brother, sort of. And I wanted to say congrats. What's wrong? Why did you stop? M Mr. Wright. What's... what is it? You... you're gonna try to trick me into a corner, aren't you? Uh... I... I know I, I'm just a poor underpaid action star, but... But I... I'm not the killer! No one said you were, Mr. Powers. No, please, don't trick me. Every time you do your lawyer thing, the witness suddenly turns into the bad guy. Every time. Witness? I will personally talk to the defense at a later time. So for now, please kindly cooperate and continue with your testimony. S sorry So you went to the defendant's room and then... Hey, wait a minute! When I... <laughs> when and how did I suddenly turn into the bad guy here? Well, way to tear me apart, buddy. Are you sure that Matt... Are you sure that that was Matt Engard? Yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing the Nickel Samurai mask then. If that's the case... I had like a yawn there. My bad. If that's the case, then, then it really can't be a mistake. It really can't be a mistake. And? What was the defendant doing standing in front of his own room? He was talking to someone at first. Thought it was the bellboy. At first? What do you mean by that? Well, he was in a bellboyish uniform and he had a bottle of juice on the tray. Sounds like an ordinary bellboy to me. Yeah. But, I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. And why is that? Hmm, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Sorry, but I can't remember right now. Sorry. I guess I'm gonna have to wait patiently for this one. Alright, let me see. You saw the two of them, the bellboy and the defendant together, right? Yeah, the bellboy just wanted to say congrats. Now... While you, uh, while you were watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? Hmm, you know, I did find something weird. I think it's been be I think it was just because Matt, well, he had the little boy tip. A tip? But that was a perfectly normal thing to do. So how long did you watch the two of them? Uh, not more than a minute or two, I think. I would guess with me that night and I couldn't make them wait. So, who are these guests you're talking about? You guys, of course. You and Maya and Little Pearl. I thought it'd be really rude since I, invite, uh, since I invited you guys if I disappeared on you. So I went back to my seat pretty soon after seeing Matt in the hallway. This is like squeezing water from a stone. It's probably pointless to press further. Do you remember this incident? Did Mr. Powers uh, leave his seat that night? I don't remember that happening at all. Maya was making such a racket in her hyper state. I ended up focusing on her. I see. In any case, from his story, he probably wasn't gone for very long. Oh. There's a contradiction in here? <laughs> I thought there wouldn't be any contradiction. That's why I pressed everything. Matt was standing there from the... Uh, after award ceremony, I went into the room by myself. Uh, he was talking with someone at first. thought it was the bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while. Then I gave up and went back. I guess... I had guessed me that night. Hmm. Watched him for a while. Went back. What evidence do I have here? Let's see. Wooden bear figure. Cover with many. Huh. Let me see. Still a samurai. His face is a bit intimidating, so he got hard luck in showbiz. Claims to be in uh, Lasfield. See the word tabloids. Uh, it's rivals with Ninja. Huh. John Doe, a butler. Can I use the butler on fucking... 
I thought it was, I thought it was the bellboy. I mean, can I use the butler? Maybe I can use the butler. What other statements do I have? I watched two of them for a while, then I gave it one back. What was before this one? I was standing there in front of his room. Okay. Let me see. I'll use the, uh, guess I'll use the butler then, alright? Nope. Huh. Sorry, Mr. Judge. Talk with someone. I was standing there in front of his room, still in nickel samurai costume. After war ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Nick Samurai Confess, a post show. Gateway map. Rip from button. Picture taken in the hallway. Uh, place was a victim at the time. Receipt. What the hell? <laughs> it's hard it's hard for me to look for contradictions where in my mind I'm just like, I know the guy's guilty. So am I am I looking for contradictions or am I trying to bullshit my way through? I don't know. All right, he was thinking with someone. Uh, he's talking with someone. Watching for a minute. I guessed me that night, and I couldn't make them wait. Oh, wow, but you did make us wait. Fucking. What am I? What am I supposed to use on this? <laughs> it's so difficult now. I just don't... Uh. At first, what do you mean by that? Uh, I think it was a normal bell boy. What was that? Hmm. How am I supposed to know? Wait a second. Actually, Mr. Powers, only a few minutes ago, you stayed... Oh. Hmm. You know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, gave the bellboy a tip. Could it be that you felt something strange about the tip-giving incident itself? Ah, yeah, that's it. You really know your job. Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor? The spell boy. He wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. You mean about the bellboy? Right. I gave the bellboy a tip. Watched two of them. Wait, what? I was standing there in front of his room, so... Okay, well, I guess I'll press that. So he gave the bellboy a tip. What's strange about that? Uh, well, you see, Matt's not a poor penny pincher like me. I was trying to figure out how much it was because the tip really shocked me. How much was it? But that's when something even more surprising happened. The bellboy was putting the tip he got in his pocket. And that's when I first got... <clears throat> that's, when I, that's when I first got a good look at the guy's face. It, I was really shocked. Hmm? I'm afraid I don't follow. Sounds like Mr. Powers was surprised twice by this event. I wonder which of his shocking moments I should ask about. Tell me about the face. Uh, what's so shocking about the bellboy's face, Mr. Powers? Well, he wasn't exactly a boy, more like an old Gramps. Hmm. I hope you know that's discrimination towards old men, and and that's a big no-no in my court. No, 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 that's not what I meant. I mean, smack in the middle of the guy's face, there was a line of stitches. A line of stitches? Yeah, it went straight from the tippity top of his head to the bottom of his chin. Almost like it was a thread, I'm like, if the thread snapped, all the stuff in his head would come spilling out. Oh, don't say that. He was there, Mr. Engard, and it was that was his butler. What, what is it, Mr. Wright? Uh, nothing, Your Honor. So that means Engard was talking with the killer. Then, if the fact were to be exposed, Engard would be declared guilty in the blank. Phoenix, you have to play dumb here. Pretend you don't know anything. Yes, Chief. You surely don't have anything you would like to add, say, Mr. Wright. Um, what did you say, Your Honor? Nothing, Mr. Wright. Nothing. 
we're just going around in circles. Now then, Mr. Powers, please continue with your testimony. Hmm. Watched the two of them a while and I gave... Okay. Well, let's press on that again. Let's learn about this tip. Let's talk about the tip. The defendant is a huge star. He can afford to give generous tips. Wouldn't you agree? Mm, sure. But giving him that much was maybe a little too much, I think. A little too much. Would you please clarify for the court? About how much would you say the defendant gave the bellboy? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. And why is that? Because he gave the bellboy a really, really fat roll of cash. Roll of cash? Ah, son of a bitch. Ah, well, how interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, wasn't it? A very fat roll of cash. That can you, that, you can hardly call that a tip. Hmm. The judge is beginning to look awfully suspicious at us. Objection! Objection! The defendant is a superstar. What kind? Uh, that kind of tip is typical fare for people like them. Are you saying that all superstars are super spenders? If I could receive large rolls of cash by simply by simply bringing people like <laughs> like things on trays, then why on earth would I stand around here prosecuting? He's got a point. I didn't even get paid, let alone rolls of cash for all my hard work. Hmm. So suppose the roll of cash was not a tip. I mean, we can just hit him with the fact, like, don't you know that he bought a uh, toothbrush for fucking, uh, thirty, thirty eight hundred dollars That's how, how, that's how much of big spenders they are. Then what is it? Payment, your honor. Ah, shit. Payment. Isn't it obvious? For the murder of Mr. Juan Cordea. Then. Then the bellboy the witness saw. Yes, he was the assassin. Oh, shit. Hold your horses now. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have any proof of this? Do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, Your Honor? I have here the card Shelley to Killer left at the scene of the crime. Shelley to Killer? He is the person the police special investigation team has been chasing for ages. I'm certain that the... I'm certain... I'm certain that the person that uh, the witness saw was very assassin, Shelley the Killer. Really? Hmm. What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, nothing. Something just clicked in my head, and I think I just figured something out. Oh. Actually, I saw the bellboy again later on that night. What? Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Right away. Let's see. This time, I was in the hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. And that's when the bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I just mean Juan's Cordeo's room. Now that I think about it, the bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. I mean... Thank you very much. That is all we need for now. Well, but I'm not done. There's still more. Let us first establish that the bellboy was truly Mr. DeKiller, then we, uh, then we shall see. Uh, shall see. Can't, can't speak tonight. Hmm. So the bellboy came out of the victim's room. And if the bellboy was really the assassin, then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain and make us laugh. <laughs> Thanks a lot, jackass. There's no laughing matter. Are you sure about that, Mia? It's pretty fucking hilarious to me. Alright. This time I was in the hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. Well, let's let's first press the shit out of him. And what time was that? Uh, well, I don't remember. The war ceremony ended, so around 8 p.m., right? I went to the mat I went to Matt's room pretty soon after that, and then I came back. And then I went to the bathroom. So I guess it was about 8, 10 p.m. by the time? You're not one for details, are you, Mr. Powers? Sorry. 
I thought I could maybe catch Matt and say some congrats. And that's when the bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Are you sure it was the same bellboy? Yeah. And how could you tell? All the bellboys wear the same uniform after all. Dude, the stitches on his face, come on. Yeah, but you see, well, he had those stitches on his face. Ugh. So I'm sure it's the same guy that we're talking about. Hmm. So which room did the bellboy come out of? Of course, when I say room, I mean Juan Gordeo's room. The victim's room, huh? Yeah. The one with all the real pretty flowers and teddy bears. It was Juan's room, alright. Ugh. Words cannot describe how screwed I am. Hmm. Let's continue, shall we? Sure, let's. Now that I think about it, the bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Um, so what exactly was so out of place about him? Right, right, right. Why is, uh, what is that in sp- in, in spend? In sp- what? I don't even know that word. I'm not even gonna try. Maybe because I have no idea what dam- what, <laughs> what damaging things he's going to say next. Um, well, the bellboy was empty-handed. Empty-handed. The bellboy was on those room service uh, was one of those room service pals, right? But he wasn't pushing a cart, and he wasn't holding a tray either. You call that a little strange, a little strange too, wouldn't you? Mm, I agree, that is a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Should I let Mr. Powers test uh, let's testimony slide, or let it slide? Try to pull a fast one. Let's do that. There's nothing strange for unu or unusual about an empty-handed bellboy. But there really, really is. There really, really isn't. If you two are done being school children, bellboys are for room service. There's no reason for them to be empty-handed ever. Your Honor, I'm asking that the witness provide statement on the, on the, some, on the subplant, uh, supplanted with the new one. Grr. Grr, I'm angry now. Are you gonna do? <clears throat> are you gonna do whatever you can to make the bellboy look suspicious? I see very well. This court recognizes and grants the prosecution's request. Mr. Powers, if you can amend your testimony, please. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. I thought it was kind of strange for the bellboy to be out empty-handed. Yeah, so he had he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. So, you're saying that it's suspicious for him to be empty-handed? Yeah, really suspicious. I mean, when I first saw the bellboy... He was holding a tray in his hand. And there was a bottle of of <clears throat> There was a bottle of juice and a wine glass on it. Juice? What kind of juice was it? Um, I'm pretty sure it was tomato juice. If we could come up with some sort of... Some sort of reason as to why he could come out empty-handed. Um... Uh, I, I'm, uh, can't, can't read, damn it. <laughs> Some sort of proof, then I think we can dodge the bullet on this one for sure. Proof, huh? Sounds like another job for the court record. I mean, we can use the wine glass, right? Let's try that. There we go. Mr. Powers. Y yes? You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that, as soon as you heard that the bellboy might have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But, but isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches and... So, a baseball has stitches. Are you saying all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? Oh, shit. Well, there's also, I mean, what about him being empty-handed? I would like to ask the court to, uh, to please take a look here. This is the crime scene. There's a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Cordeo's body. The liquid inside of this glass is tomato juice. And now, if you like, if you look at what is on top of the table in the lower corner right, anyone can clearly see that is a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Cordeo's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty-handed when he left. But. That would mean that the bellboy had seen and left the dead body in the room. No, 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 no. Ah, but can you prove that Mr. Cordea was already dead at that time? 
Oh shit, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes? I blame you for leading me down this route. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing you should like to share with us? Is there? The bellboy was empty-handed, or shall I say, empty-handed. What? I recall you had something interesting to say about his hand. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Huh? What? The bellboy, uh, he was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, pitch black leather ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Leather gloves. Why didn't you mention them earlier? S sorry, it slipped my mind. Boy, does this look like... Does this make the bellboy look really suspicious? Alright, gotta focus. I can't get lax here. So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Wright. The bellboy was wearing... The bellboy was wearing black ones. Black leather ones. I had like a fucking hiccup. So a football's made of leather. Are you saying all footballs are suspicious because they're made of leather? Oh. But that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant. And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think that even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. Ah, God damn it, Judge. It seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh, yes. Please, tell us more. Okay, please don't. Jesus. You're gonna get my kill. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went to knock on Matt's door, just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room, and the old guy just left without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then came back to my seat. That's a pretty short testimony. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room. Yeah, I kind of saw all that by accident. Some accident. I say you saw too much. All of it was suspicious to high heavens. Hmm. I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bell boy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we, Mr. Wright? Your cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. You're gonna fucking ruin this for me. Alright. Let's see what we got. How long do I have to drag out this fucking, this goddamn case? I'm protecting a fucking guilty man. Is that why, uh, is that what you saw while you were busy spying? Excuse me? I may be poor under paid action star, but even I wouldn't stoop to spying. Well, I think the point is, where did you watch all this from, Mr. Powers? Oh, um, from the door of the bathroom with my left eye in the corner of sneaky, <laughs> sort of sneaky spy-like. I knew he was spying. Please, does it really matter if he was doing it over, uh, over or underhanded? What did the bellboy do next? That's all we care about. Just peeking through a corner. Sees a little tuft of hair. I said, hold it. Um, okay. That's better. <clears throat> what kind of statement is that? Please, uh, please, uh, ab uh, fuck. Please elaborate and give us a few more details. Oh, um, okay. I should probably ask him on one question at a time. Brought person inside about the something. He gave something to this person? Yeah. And what was this something? <laughs> uh, if I remember what it was, I wouldn't be calling it something, would I? But that implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember Mr. Powers? Mm, I think it was something kind of small. It's an incredibly crucial piece of, of information. Please try to remember what it was. Hmm, I'll try. In the meantime, let's talk on another point, namely, what the bellboy did. Oh. Uh, so after he gave, uh, after he gave the person inside the room that thing, the old guy just left without even going into the room. Where did the bellboy go after he left Mr. Ingard's room? 
Hmm, he opened the door to the viola hall. Went in there, and who knows after that, right? I do. After that, I went to the bathroom, and then back to my seat. Did you see anything strange, suspicious, or just out of the ordinary at the time? Oh yeah, I saw that one thing. What? You saw something else? There was this jitter alien. There was this jittery alien with a ray gun. He was watching Juan's door, all some, all some sort of stalker light. I think we can forget. I think we can forget about the alien. Well, Mr. Power's testimony just now was just as vague as his first. A little troublesome, isn't it? All right, don't worry, me. I got this. Come on. I haven't messed up that many times yet. All right. I said, hold it. I said, I said. All right. The person inside. Uh, don't ask anything. What about the person inside? So, who took the something the bellboy handed off? Um, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Only in an arm. Then you're saying you didn't see the person's face. Yeah. I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point, if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, all you can see was the person's arm. Yes. Yes, that's just... it was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is this all really that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is of the utmost importance. This is when... this is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm. Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was that the bubble handed off. Well, let's see. I think it was... no. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. Y yes sir. I saw... Uh, if I saw it again, I, I could say for sure. Some sort of wooden statue. Wooden statue? You mean this? What was the point of that pregnant pause? Where did this objection come from? Well, speak up. Uh, it was me, Your Honor. What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, if you have something to say, please spit it out. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Okay, Phoenix, deep breaths. Mr. Powers, there's something you saw. Was it this item? Oh, hey, that's it. That, that's the something. Wow, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out. Hmm. I recall we found this at Matt Engard's mansion. Shut up, Edgeworth! At the defendant's house. Jesus. What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. Shelly the Killer assassinated Juan Corday in his room. And then he stole the wooden bear from the sentin uh, from sentence from the scene of the crime. Then the bear began the bear being found at Mr. Engard's mansion would mean. It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Matt Engard is the killer's client. Uh, order, order, I said. Order. Mr. Wright, this is most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah, I know. Sorry, Mia. No, it's alright. Your judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would be and then it would have uh, then it would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth would have. I almost forgot that he knew about it, too. Hmm. I think it's clear that there's no need for us to continue this trial. I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Yes, Mr. Wright? There's still a few points left that we have to not have fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh... Well, we can't have that. Alright, Mr. Wright, what customer point would you like to explore further? Power's testimony, the person who received the bear, the bear itself. The person who received the bear. Ugh, but it was found in Matt's home. Mm. Power's testimony. Bear. 
I mean, he said it was a small wooden object. He didn't say it was a bear, but he said he remembers it when he sees it. Bear itself. Let's look at the bear itself. God, what am I trying to do here? I think it's fa I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. The bear, Mr. Wright? That was found at Mr. Uh, Mr. Angar's. You know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna save this. <laughs> I'm just gonna save this so I don't kill myself. However, Mr. Engar was arrested at the hotel that night, which means the scene of the murder occurred. Uh, the uh, wow. That means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh, I think Your Honor has already figured out what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to say. It is impossible. It is not possible that it was Matt Engard who took this bear to his mansion. What? Why? That's very true. We didn't consider that point, Mister Wright. There was no way, time-wise, for the defendant to have taken this bear home. Ah, oh, shit. Disaster averted. You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at Engard's mansion. We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler, all this time, he was the killer. The killer and Engard were working together, uh, so to speak. And the killer was hiding in Engard's mansion as his butler. What? What a bold move! The bear figurine was brought back to the Engard mansion by the killer himself. When it took, uh, when it looked like he was he was about to be arrested, Engard had him do so. I assume because it would have been bad had the police found it during the investigation. Okay, but what's the significance of the fucking bear? Well, Mr. Wright, have you been have you been uh, you've been quiet for a while now? This is too much. Is there anything I can attack with? I have to try. I have to try to find something else. Will you do now, Mr. Wright? What do you plan to do? I plan to explode a clearly shake a uh, shaky place. In, uh, Eh. Shaky blades to Mr. Power's testimony. What? There's still another one? There's indeed, Your Honor. And it's quite a questionable point. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well. We can't have that. Alright, Mr. Wright. What questionable point would you like to explore further? Uh, person that received the bear? Power's testimony? Let's see the person who received the bear. There was one thing in the power testimony that was very unclear, and that is the identity of the person who received that bear. He gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear, we can't be sure of... Ah! Excuse me? Wh what is it, Mr. Powers? If you're gonna scream like that, then at least give us a good reason. Oh, yeah, sorry. Actually, so I remembered. Um, I remember who took the bear. What? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm. But, but the arm... It was the Nickel Samurai's arm, I swear it. You gotta be kidding! Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai. Son of a bitch. Order! Order, I say! It looks like you dug your own grave, yet again. How many times is it today? I've lost count. So the person who took the little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And as we all know, Matt Ungard is the Nickel Samurai. But he was asleep at that time, so fuck you. <laughs> thanks, to the uh, thanks to the defense, we made that all clear. I think we had enough. We now know why this bear figurine was in the defendant's mansion as well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client, who has hired the assassin to commit murder, was Mr. Ungard. Oh, fuck. I see no reason for this trial to continue. Therefore, I will now hand down my verdict. Thank you, Your Honor, for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright? You cannot win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. 
After all, what Edgeworth has stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What should I do? I have to drag it out. OBJECTION! There's only one way for me to drag this trial out. Come on. The only thing I have left is this one dirty trick. Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe my client is the, assa uh, is the assassin's client. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figure from the assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was found at Engard's mansion. However, it's possible that this is all work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What am I saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real culprit. The real client? Yes. Huh. That's all you have? Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Uh, who did you say that the killer real client, and therefore the real murderer? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no! It can't be. It can't be. That would be hilarious. Oh, God. I don't think we can use Adrian, because... Because then that'll just instantly be disproven by, by her stabbing, stabbing the dead body with the knife. There's no reason for her to hire the dead killer she's going to stab a dead body. I mean, we can use Adrian, but just just for shits and giggles. You let me down, Mr. Wright. Huh? I know you're aware of the truth. You're free to turn your eyes from it. Or at least try to make some sense while you're doing it. Hey, man, I just wanted, I just wanted to make sure. Alright, I guess we can throw, throw Adrian under the bus. Super throw Adrian out of the bus. I guess I can say that she stabbed the dead body just because she was pissed. The true killer is Adrian. Adrian Andrews. Yes, we already know that she tried to frame Matt Engard for the crime. By watching a spare, uh, by wearing a spare nickel samurai costume. Oh, then the nickel samurai's arm that I saw. That could have been very well Miss Andrews. But what about Mr. Ungard? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then, finding this figure at Mr. Ungard's mansion. It was a, it was a well-laid trap set by Andrews. Mr. Edgeworth. What is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic. Besides, which there is no evidence to support it. However, I can fully discount it, uh, its possibility either. Hmm. What is with this trial? Come on, anyone can tell Engard did it. Oh shit, I skipped the back thing. Yeah, unbelievable, it's not, not something petty. Or whatever the fuck they said, I didn't get through it. This is to save Maya, this is to save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is the one fight I can't give up on. Order! All disrupted parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor, for the, for the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with his what-if game. His what-if game? Mr. Hedgeworth. Prosecution is still prepared to challenge the defendant's theory. Mr. Wright. Even you must have thought it strange and wondered, why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. The killer did, spe uh, did specifically bring the bear to Engard right away. Why did, why did you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court record is, uh, once the court record knows it's significant, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor. The prosecution calls upon the witness who will clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who will who will that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. I see. Well then, the court will take a short ten minute recess.
prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honor. God damn it. Huh. Uh. That is a lot. That is a lot to take in. That is a lot. <laughs> Fuck you, Engard, you piece of shit. You're a jackass and I hate you. Alright. So. I think right now is a good stopping point. Things are getting heated. But while we have this 10 minute recess, we should end it off for now. Um, because things are things are definitely gonna heat up. So next time, uh, next stream, two days from uh, you know, two nights from now, right? That that's two nights from now. Am I, am I going crazy? Yeah, two nights from two nights from now. Uh, the streaming schedule. Um, next stream is gonna be more Arkham Origins for sure. That, that is definitely a, a thing that's going to happen. And then, uh, you know what, actually, no, you know what, fuck it. It sucks to just, it sucks to leave off on something like this. So next stream is going to be more Phoenix Wright. We're going to do that. And then, um, and then after that, we'll, uh, we'll do what we got to do at Origins. And then probably look into what other things we're doing. Uh move on with like white day and stuff like that but that's all gonna happen next week as of now shit <laughs> as of now the uh the streams are gonna get archived on youtube as always i'm going to be looking into some kind of uh new things i want to try out on the channel not the twitch channel but the uh, youtube channel i am slowly descending into madness right now because i am somewhat tired not gonna lie um, what else? What else? What else there? I feel like there's something else important for me to say. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm definitely going to be looking into, uh, Corpse Party Book of Shadows or whatever the hell the sequel to that was. And then, and then what else? What else would I like to do? I think that's it for now. Yeah, I think, I think that's pretty much everything for now. So, for the people who are watching this on Twitch, watching VODs, watching it live, I thank you very much for coming down watching this. It helps out a lot. Very, very much so. And for the people watching on YouTube, please consider coming down and watch this live. The, the uh, stream times are in the description of the video. And if you're still unsure about the stream times, it's in the schedule on the Twitch page. I mean, it doesn't really change. It's kind of, it's kind of been like that for the past like month or so, I think. But trust me, watching it live, I promise you'll, I'll promise you'll have. I'm not gonna say the best of fun, but you'll have some fun. It, it won't, it won't be as bad as you think. And I think that is it for now. For the people on YouTube, if you are watching this and you are subscribed, think about clicking the bell. If you're not subscribed, think about subscribing. I think that's pretty much it. Like I said before, all of the Corpse Party videos should be uploaded now for the first Corpse Party game, at least. And then following that will be the archive streams, uh, archive streams, uh, you know, you know what I mean. The rest of the streams I have to archive. So like, so like, you know, the Phoenix Wright stuff and fucking what else? <laughs> the Phoenix Wright stuff and uh, Batman and what else am I missing? White Day. White Day is one that I'm missing. I gotta archive that. And I think that is it for now. My voice is getting... <clears throat> oh, my voice is getting raspy. God damn it. That is a sign that it is definitely time to end this. But, like I said earlier, next time we come back to the stream, we're doing more Phoenix Wright, because it's time to finish this case. And I think there's another extra case after this because of the trilogy. I think they put an extra case in. Or maybe this might be the end. I'm not sure. But there's a lot of twists and turns happening. I'm liking it. It sucks that I'm trying to defend a guy who's guilty. And that is everything that I have to say for now. So, 
as always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care.